He like Yannis. Yannis gonna shoot, but when you get him that shot, he gonna take the shot. He don't care if he miss it or not. He gonna take the shot. Like, do it, Ben Simmons. Like, try shooting. Maybe you gonna learn how to shoot when you play, but try doing this stuff. But since he's not gonna do it, I will never put them in that situation. Until then, I will put him there, but but with them, with the Nets, and they cannot go in the playoffs learning how to play defense against the Bucks. You cannot because the Bucks been playing. The reason the Bucks, yeah, I tell people the reason the Bucks been the Bucks suck in the in the bubbles because the Bucks they was playing so good, but when that when that bubble stuff came, everybody fell off. Nobody know if they was coming back. Some of them they didn't even go to the bubble, so it was like. Team wasn't even thinking about playing and stuff like that, but this year we seen it. They don't have the same point guard like they had in the bubble that couldn't shoot and help Yannis and stuff. Now you got Drew Holiday. You not stupid to leave Drew Holiday open on that three point line, cause he gonna kill you. You not stupid to just leave Drew Holiday open in the paint. He gonna kill you. He can dunk. He can do this. He can help other players game get better. So we seen that whole offense change, and people still comparing them to back then. Oh, they didn't make it last year, so they can't make it this year. Like, dude, that's a whole different playing style they got right now. You see, it's like Yana hitting shot. Not like he ain't shooting like he he used to shoot. It's like he hitting threes now. You not crazy to just leave Yana's open on threes no more. You got to jump in his way a little bit because if you leave him there, it's all 50-50, he going to hit it. Nine back then it was a 50 50. Back in nine, it's like 60 something else, something like that. He would hit it and stuff like that. He ain't even trying to take pin, like take two point shots and stuff. So I'm looking like with that type of game, it would be high with the Milwaukee button with Milwaukee Bucks going against the next this year and next trying to go to the championship if they if they don't get the stuff together real quick. But with the Lakers, I don't see the Lakers going to the championship. I don't care how anybody look at I don't see the Lakers going to the championship. Because the Lakers shot themselves in the legs by once by getting that by getting that center. When they got that center, it kills few people games. It didn't even kill people games that their own their own players they had to come on come on TV and tell them say, hey, y'all gotta stop playing what's in the back, yo, because the pins getting clogged up. We need the pin back. Nobody can play because you got that big center standing in the paint. That's the only way he can play and stuff like that. Now you get this play, the person that is a slicer can't even slice in no more. Because you got two, these two defenders standing right there. All right, that's two body. Then you got his body standing right there. It's like, what are you going to do? You got to shoot and stuff like that. And we all know LeBron, ain't gonna, LeBron can't shoot. Yeah, he will hit a lucky shot once in a while, but he can't shoot. We yeah. know that for a fact. So... And he don't want to get on that three-point line. I mean, on that free throw line. So you're really shooting yourself in the legs. Y'all, yeah, y'all help yourself on defense, but y'all kill your offense's game. So what y'all gonna do now? Y'all got to learn now how to work on your offensive game. Like, and you, you not gonna learn that on, um, if you gonna run into the, run into what's it called, run into one of these teams in the, in the playoff. For example, if they play the if they play the Warrior in the playing, I don't think they can beat the Warrior. So you think the Warriors think can, will beat them? I think the Warrior will beat them in the playing because it would take it's a it's a mind team with LeBron when you get in the playing with LeBron. And that's what people don't get. If you play LeBron in the playing, all you gotta do is just play LeBron for the first few the first half, just play him tough and make sure your score. Pull like 12 points, make him be down like 12 points, and LeBron gonna break down real quick. And when he get down 12 points, he start pointing finger real quick at everybody. Hey, get this way, get that way, get it, and start getting mad. And y'all just play your game. And I know the the warrior, the warrior gonna go up 12 points real quick, but they're gonna start shooting threes. They're gonna start hitting stuff on that. And LeBron wanna wanna prove stuff, and he will take himself. God tell everybody, LeBron been playing good lately. People get the the media with pressing. Well, I don't press him on his game. I just look at him like, dude, you've been playing good lately. Like, I like when you passing the ball to players, man. You don't act like you the star on the team. You want to be forcing shots and doing all that stuff. 
if you average like 12 points on the team and you pass the ball about 10 or 15 times, I appreciate that, LeBron. That means you looking up to build other players than up. You ain't looking up for yourself. You ain't trying to force plays that we know you can't get. You ain't trying to do all that all that stuff. Yeah, let other people criticize you. But you know you're doing stuff to win. You making sure you build up people to win. That's why I look at I look at the net and I look at James Harden. James Harden playing now. James Harden can average fifty points if you want. But shoot, he try to help other people. And Westbrook right now, Westbrook doing the same thing. People be mad at Westbrook. I like, dude, Westbrook right now, all Westbrook need to do is go to the Spurs. Westbrook need to go to the Spurs and go play with back a bit. And let that do coaching. Westbrook need a coach. Westbrook need a coach. Because Westbrook can run a whole offense and make everybody on the offense better. Everybody. But he need a coach. Somebody who can coach him. Somebody who can coach him and tell him, hey, this is what you need to do. Slow down on this time, on this time of time and do this, do this, and do that. And somebody who will be able to build defense around Westbrook and stuff like that. Because no matter who you put around Westbrook, if Westbrook get healthy, he always take that team somewhere, no matter what. Westbrook make they, play, they say players. West, they say LeBron made players better. No, Westbrook made players better because what look what Westbrook did for his center. He gave his center that big ass contract. We all sat there and said, "How the heck he got that contract?" Because of Westbrook. Westbrook was dropping ball off to him. Look how he went. He nine to the. He nine to the. So New Orleans, what is he doing? He's not doing nothing. He's not playing. He's not doing what he was doing with Westbrook. It's like Westbrook making everybody better. Look at the look at the Washington right now. Everybody was counting Washington off. And I told people, all I like, do, y'all counting Washington off when Westbrook is injured. Y'all counting Washington off when Westbrook is injured. And y'all seeing all this. So all I like, do, they ain't playing to get out. You got one person injured sitting on the bench. And when he come in, the other person ain't in. So now when they start playing together and y'all seeing it, now it's like, oh, he ain't winning championship yet. All I do, it's not him. It's just you got to coach. He got to find somebody got to coach him the right way. You got to put the right person around him that can coach him, build the right around him. The same way they do for Steph Curry and stuff like that, you can do it for Westbrook. Westbrook don't have to be the three-point shooter. Westbrook can still average 40 points, 30 points without shooting three points. If you can do that, you don't need no three. He play a game like the old school way. You, he's not gonna, he's not gonna kill his game or do nothing like that. It's just the way they build the game now. They just they pick, they pick and choose. Let the let the game be like the way it used to be. Let the players then love the teams. That's why I love football because football they don't care if you a big name. Mm. They don't care. Like it's all about the team. If you think you are big name, they will get you out of the league. Quick as hell. Is another person going to come in there, going to pick up a one-handed catch, or going to do this other stuff that you did, and that name going to pop up too? You put that hammer on your fist, you covered up. It's all about the team. Let it be like that in the NBA. Because it was like that in the NBA. Yeah, y'all can y'all can make the NBA something like that. Now look at the NBA now like they like N1. Like anyone used to be back in the days, where you just like the players, then do whatever you want to do, but just minus the ball in the shot, ball bouncing on the person's head. That's all about it. But you look at Kyrie Irving play, that's an and one star right there. You look at all this play, that's an and one star right there. The lane being open, nobody playing defense, no more doing all that stuff, just letting the person show ball. That's what we used to see in and one. These dudes that never used to make it in the NBA. They used to try to make well, it in the NBA. Ky- now Ky- was- Kyrie's not an and Kyrie's not an and one guy to me. Kyrie is just that skilled. Like he, yeah, he, he's, he, he's, he's, he's the he's most skilled. skilled by the way. He's the most skilled player today, next to Joker. Like they're the most skilled players I've ever seen in a while. Like around the basket, they're that skilled. But his one on one game, he can never be a point guard. Well, that's what, well, that's Ky- what everybody was saying. Well, everybody well was saying. the point guards, well, I give this to C-Pen how he is because C- C-Pen has to get on me sometimes because I'm very old school. So he has to check me sometimes and get me back on the track. These point guards today are very shoot first, 
then pass. Whereas back in the day, your point guard was pass first and then shoot. So, yeah, in this dynamic, Kyrie, I would feel what you're feeling. Kyrie is a two guard. So is Steph. To me, both of them are two guards. They're just undersized. Um, Kyrie can pass a little better than the old two guards. He can pass a lot better. So can Steph. But the game, the way it's played now, as far as like his skill, Kyrie has been playing to me more team ball this year than he has in the past. He's making the yeah. extra pass. He's moving the ball. Um, in the games when Harden wasn't playing, he got to the net. He was moving the ball around. He's actually sacrificing. I know it's hard to believe because this is Kyrie we're talking about. He's sacrificing a lot of his game so KD could get off or Joe Harris, Shamit. And in the games that KD wasn't there, Kyrie led the team to a lot of big wins. They won some big games this year without KD there. So, yeah, I feel you. As far as individual solo ball one-on-one, we got to give it. Kyrie's he's, he's the best or in the top five, like one-on-one. But this year, you, you got to give him respect as far as actually playing the position because Harden hasn't been there all the time. Even before Harden got there, KD was hurt. He still was out there moving the ball, and he was out there running the offense. They had some big wins, especially against the Knicks without KD. So I give him a lot of kudos this year. He's actually stepped his game up tremendously, and he's learning. And I feel like the point guards today, they're more of two guards, but we have to live with it. This is the way the game is going we got to we got to let them they're point guards now but they're the different point guard they're to the shoot first they're not to facilitate there there's no more rondos no more <laughs> or or um even mugsy bowls we don't have those point guards no more we just got shooting guards that are point guards and the shooting guards today they're basically defensive specialists more outside of clay and james harden yeah, there's all kinds of different point guards now, man. You got your hybrids, like we just mentioned, um, such your traditional point guards. And, um, I mean, there's one more category for, like, a different point guard. But, yeah, it's like it's a bunch of different categories in today's game when you look at all the positions. You know what I mean? So. Yes. Because nobody grew up playing a position. They just grew up landing the game of their favorite player. Yeah. So if you look at if you if you got your favorite player, it's like, it's like LeBron James or Kyrie Irving, or, or let's just say Kyrie Irving, for example. You got your player, your first player as a Kyrie Irving when you coming up, and all of a sudden you get like six seven, six eight. Before you go low, you like seven feet. Right. You've been coming up all your life playing your game as a point guard. Now you got this dude. Now he's like seven feet, eight feet. He already got ball control. He already got handles and stuff like that. So right. now it's like you got high for them now. They don't even play the position no more because they already know how to do all these stuff and because they've been doing it all that times coming up. So you ain't well, that's, no well, well, no that's, well, that's Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis grew up a two guard. He got bigger. Yeah. So the way he plays is a two guard. So that's just how he plays. Um, Julius Randle, I believe Randle played some point guard back in the day. He got bigger. He's able to handle the ball like he does. Lamar Odom was the same way. Lamar Odom was always handling the ball. When he went to yeah. Miami or to L.A., well, when he went to Miami with Pat and them, D. Wade, he had to learn to play more off the ball. But he was better when he played with Kobe because he was able to handle the ball and do his thing coming off the bench as a six man. He could boogie on you. So, yeah, you're right. They're seven-foot guys. The seven-footers today, they mainly played. They were small guards at one point. They were point guards or two guards, and they played. Their ball handling skills are a lot better than the old big men back in the day because back in the day, it's a different style now. Like, you got your big men now who can run, like, your big men now to me like Joel Embiid. 
um, Joker, um, Bam Adebayo. Bam Adebayo would be considered a power forward when I grew up. We would have him at the four. But now the game is different. He's a five now. So, and like Joel Embiid, what he was doing, we would not have been accustomed to that because the only guy I say that was like Joel Embiid and them guys today was Akeem Olajuwon. Like Penny Hardaway said, Akeem was like a small four in a center's body. That's basically what he was, and he had the footwork of a guard, like a two or a one. He could get you in any position. Yeah. So the the difference now in the game is the guys now, yeah, I agree with you. They're more two guards and point guards, so they're playing like real small. That's why Anthony Davis is a freak of nature because – We've never seen a guy 6'11 or 7 feet of his size shoot the ball like as far as play the post like he is. And then KD, him being 7 foot, KD was always dribbling, dribbling like he worked on his handles. You could tell when he grew up, he was going down the street, dribbling the ball between his legs, doing that. So now we got a 7 foot freak of nature, a guy who can handle the ball like a 5'8 guy. So, yeah, I agree. So, uh, I got between Anthony, you got Anthony Davis, you got Joel B, and you got what's the kid name in Minnesota? Uh, Cat, um, Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, Carl Anthony Towns. Who will you pick? Out of who you said? Anthony Davis on offenses why this on offenses why if you want to build a team who will you pick Anthony Davis Joel and B or Towns or Carl Anthony I mean, Towns you're about offensively, yeah go ahead C P if you talking about offensively I'm taking M D M D from a at all man I mean I know um AD might be a little bit of a better ball handler, but um, I think MB got better footwork. Um, he got more post moves, and he's just gonna be stronger. And uh, he got the he got a he got a jump shot, and um, shoot, he can shoot the three too if you want. But I would love him to be on the post ball. I mean, just shoot the three only when you need to. But I would take MB. You talking about offensively? I would take him B because he got more dog in him than the other two. Yeah, that's it. Nah, nah. <laughs> man, why people be sleeping on that dude, man? Towns. Because he's soft. Towns got punked by Jimmy Towns Butler. Soft, man. Jimmy Butler already proved him. I feel sorry for, like I said, I feel sorry for him losing his mother. That's very hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 very sorry for that. But it's, he people get that Jimmy Butler stuff missed that. He didn't get so on Jimmy Butler. It's a respect thing it was doing up here, bro. But it's not only that, it's like look, Jimmy Butler punked you in practice. He took you to school. He took Wiggins to school. He basically just destroyed you guys. It was it wasn't even close. Everybody talks about it. Even Derrick Rose was over there laughing. Derrick Rose was laughing like, man, Jimmy kicking y'all ass. It's like, and you seven <laughs> one, you know, it it's like I just don't see dog in him. Carl Anthony Towns, like, I mean, he's not soft. It's just he don't have that <laughs> like if I'm going to the game and it's a it's a pickup game. And I got to choose my five, including myself. I'm not picking Carl Anthony Towns. I'm picking Embiid. I mean, it's facts. And if I could get Bam, I would get Bam too. Um, I would get anybody. I just wouldn't get him. He's, he's soft to me. To me, the Anthony um, Edwards, Anthony Edwards showing way more dog in him than Carl Anthony Towns. Oh, easily, man. Like, his personality, too. Bro. Right. And Not he, even close. And he dominates, like, the conversation when they're together and they're talking to the media. 
He dominates it. Yeah. His 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 presence, he got that it factor. Like when you like like people used to say when Jordan used to walk in the room, it, he just yeah. he lit up the room. When Kobe walked in the room, people didn't like Kobe, but that motherfucker had a presence. You had to respect it. If not, you finna get ran over by him. Motherfuckers be like, who this motherfucker think he is, Jordan? Motherfuckers drop 40 or 50 on your ass. You gonna be like, damn, I guess he is. <laughs> you know, so that's that's what I'm talking about. It's that presence. Now, Shaq, I didn't like Shaq, but Shaq, when he walks in the room, he, he demands presence because he had more dog in him than Carl Anthony Towns. Now, Anthony Towns is the better player as far as his skill and what he could do, but Shaq got more dog than him. I would go into the game with Shaq because Shaq got more dog. Shaq was just lazy. That was it. <laughs> that was it. But as far as... I, I, he, he's the most better player than the three I just named. Right, right. No, skill-wise, skill-wise, as far as the big man, yeah, he's not. I would take Joel Embiid over Shaq any time of his career, but I'm just saying he has more dog in him than AD and Towns. If he played in a game against them, he would dominate them. He wouldn't dominate Embiid because Embiid would have been like whatever. He'd have matched that energy. Oh, no, like, done. let's you go. Saying, you saying the game? You saying the game this year? You said what? You saying the game this year when he came back from injured? Who Embiid? He dominated Embiid. Who? Times. He didn't really dominate him, but he he got off. But he didn't really dominate him. And that was all on Embiid. <laughs> Right, yeah, but he didn't really dominate him, dog. Yeah. Okay, he didn't really dominate him. Okay, but if if Towns is so dominant, why hasn't Minnesota been shit? I'm just saying. Uh, I can tell you why Minnesota ain't been nothing. Why? Because Minnesota wants, they don't know how to drive. And when they drive, a, and every time they drive a player, they never keep the player for like, three or four years straight, they always get rid of the player. So none of the player always learn how to play together. Every time they always start clicking, they find a way to get rid of the player or injuries always kick in and take them apart on the way they play and stuff like that. I I'm, I grew up in Minnesota, bro. I was like in Minnesota and stuff. So it's like I follow them everywhere to go. So it's like they do that. that that's what I'm saying this year. This year they could have been they could have been good, but again, cover and injury kick in and took half of the players away. And they had the whole time they was playing, they was playing with bench players and stuff. And when everybody got back, this few their few games, and you go back and check the record when everybody started playing together, the record is way better. They're beating good teams and stuff like that. It's not like they were beating good teams that they didn't have the good players. No, they were beating good teams that had the best players on the team. And they couldn't do nothing with Minnesota. It's like they just got to learn how to play together and the organization got to learn how to stop getting rid of players too quickly. It's like because they're getting rid of players that go into other teams and being good. And we're sitting there like, God I was looking like when they did when they did that stuff with Jimmy Butler and get Jimmy Butler, I, I told my friends that I do. That's the wrong move they ever made because we all knew Jimmy Butler wasn't gonna stay there. I told them from the beginning all I do, he didn't he didn't want to stay there, and he never wanted to come yet. They just traded him yet. Well, I, don't, I, don't, him, I don't think he didn't want to stay there. The problem was he felt like Wiggins to me you should have traded either Cat or Wiggins. And signed Jimmy Butler, and you would have been fine. The problem is they didn't want to go with Jimmy Butler. They wanted to go with Wiggins. I don't know why. Wiggins, he's good, but he's he's like a number three or a four option. He's not a two or a one. So they should have let him go, and they should have signed Jimmy Butler. Butler and Towns would have been the better duo. The thing is... Towns to me, he he just shows a lot of softness. He don't show the consistency of a number one or a guy I would trust with my franchise. I just don't see it. I I just can't put him over Joker or even Embiid or even AD. I just can't put him over them. 
Like he's skilled he's, as far as his skill wise, he's very skilled. I just I just don't know. You know, I just I, he just he just hasn't shown me where it's like, whoa, okay, I watched him. It's like, okay, he jumps off my screen. Because I can make an argument when Boogie, before he got his serious injury, Boogie was way better than all of them to me before he got his serious injury in um, New Orleans when he had that bad injury. But other than that, Boogie was way better in, in Sacramento. If Even if they weren't winning, he was way better. He jumped off the screen offensively and defensively more than Towns did in Minnesota. Oh, absolutely. Like, it wasn't even close with Boogie and Towns, man. I'm, I'm taking Boogie 10 times out of town right. before the injury. Right, right. It's just that Boogie got hurt. So, not – and then his attitude, I can't take up for his attitude. You know, he had a bad attitude. But when he went and, to New Orleans – That's one of the things that made him popular too. Yeah, that's true. But when he went to New Orleans – he turned it around, and he was clicking. When they were clicking, New Orleans was dangerous. <laughs> they were yeah, tough. Was looking scary. They were looking that real was scary. Looking scary right, because if he wouldn't have got hurt when he did, I think they could have snuck a lot of teams in the playoffs. Even if the refs were against them, you couldn't stop that firepower because you had AD working around the perimeter. AD could do what he wanted to do. Boogie played in the post. Uh -huh. And well, he's, that's perfect. Boogie game, is, Boogie game is different from Towns and LB. Yeah, because, it is. Because he, he mostly, he mostly back then, he was mostly like the pin guy and stuff like that. But Towns and LB, they mostly like like to shoot and stuff like that. Right. They don't really, they don't really like working the pin like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And Boogie put the ball on the floor too. Oh yeah. yeah, when when the game started changing, that's I mean, that's what he's when he said Boogie, I couldn't argue with that because when the game started changing, Boogie game changed right away just as the game changed because he picked up the three point two like quick as hell. Like he started yeah. shooting threes too. And so so I can't argue with that, but it's just the injury talking away from the from the argument for saying hey, he's the best, he could be the best center right. now and stuff like that. Because the injury, that's why I saying like we get it kind of right back to the same old stuff that like we cannot compare stuff and stuff together right. with all taking the stuff and in right. and stuff like that. Like with, with all the injury, he could have been the best, best, the big man right now in the game. Since Shock left, he could have been the big man in the game that dominated in the game, but the injury robbing from that. So we can't just sit there and say, Oh, and B is the best big man. We ever seen so far now, like no, 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 People will, people will want to have argument over that when they know that it's not no <clears throat> argument to have over that. It's like, it's just a simple answer that you know that you know is, yeah, he can't play that. It's simple. It's like, he can't play that. And they would kill him. This in the game, this in the game. Jo Joel B, yeah, he got that toughness and stuff, but the dude, he complains too much for me. He complains too much. I don't do you big as hell. You hitting all these dudes, then why are you complaining? Like yeah. when they hit you back, like you hit me, I hit you, then you complaining. Why the heck you complaining? Like stop complaining when you know you over you like seventy five pound over me and stuff, and you putting your elbow in my chest, and when I bump you back and stuff, then you want to say, oh, he hitting me, he doing it. Like dude, that's Shoot, all. Ariza, Ariza was finna whoop his ass the other night. Yeah, that's a girl mentality for me right there. I don't like that. It's like, come on, if you want to be tough, be tough. Be tough both ways. If you're going to ditch it, learn how to take it. Don't ditch it, then you want to run for it. No. You ain't going to put your elbow in my chest and don't expect something back. Uh-uh. No, dude. This is the game we play at. You're not going to be the only big man yet putting your elbow in my chest, although you're bigger than me, but shoot, I'm going to be poking in your back a little bit. Like, you're not <laughs> just going to do that.
And so, he complains when he's doing that. I do. That's not. That's not what big man do. Like if you gonna play big with the man, y'all play big. Don't sit there and complain. That's why I rather don't even like his game. I rather don't like. I like his game the way he play, but I rather don't like him on that. It's like you complain too much for me, dude. It's like, come on, you bigger than this dudes. You don't. It's like if you don't want him to touch you, stop going and trying to body them down to the lane then. Then they will not get on you like you be getting on them. But you get on them, pushing them down to the lane. You expect this dude to just be a punk, just keep going back on and back on. He can't do something to push you forward. How you pushing him back on? Like, come on, stop complaining. That's like, I just be looking at all of them and I'm like, dude, it's just like, y'all just cannot be compared to the back then people. We just got to keep you in your generation. Like, keep y'all in your generation, the generation y'all play in, and see if y'all better than who's in the generation. I'm telling you, I, I tried to tell C. Penn that, but he just won't listen to me, man, because I'm lighter than him. So that's why he don't want to listen to when I tell him that. You know, I've been trying to tell him this forever, but, you know, he don't want to listen to me. You know, you know, he, he I'm lighter than him, so he don't want to listen to that. So I, I wait, understand. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Wait, I missed all that. I missed all that. Did you say, bro? I missed all that. No, nah, he basically he basically was saying you can't compare compare today's players to the old school. So I came in with my little, you know, me talking my shit, like man, what are you, you know. About? I think I don't understand that. No, like, 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 like I, I was saying, I tried to tell C. Penn that, but he didn't want to hear that because I'm light skinned. So you know, he don't want to hear that shit. Uh, you know, here we go. You know, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> C. Penn, like, man, look, man, I ain't listening. That nigga, that light ass nigga, I don't want to hear that <laughs> shit. So you know, you know, I try to tell him that, you know, with the argument with Steph Curry, but he be like, I'm hating. He like, I don't like Steph when I when I had a goat when I got a Golden State Warrior hat with his number on it. But I'm a hater. I don't like Steph, you know. So you know, that's what C Pen do to me, man. You know, it's my boy. But you know he like he don't listen to me, man. I I don't know shit. You know how, how it is. <laughs> you, you just didn't like what I said about T Mac. You just didn't like what I said about T Mac. That's a that's a guy in hand. Yeah, because to me, I just I I'm like okay, so I'm just saying T Mac played in a harder era than Steph Curry. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's fine. But I'm not saying T Mac was a bum. T Mac was nice. He was he was dope. But like his playoff failures, kind of, his playoff failures, have kind of kind of hurt his career just a little bit, dog. I mean, it's just based on the uh, when it was crunch time, man. Like the four quarters and overtimes when he had the opportunity to close out the series, man. I mean, thirty five to thirty six percent. Bro, Houston, that's but, who, bad. but who was he going <laughs> that's against? Not good. But that's what that's I'm what saying. I was gonna say. It's not <laughs> right. You act like he was going against though. some bums. Like he went against some good teams. Yeah, but he also had to lead those series. Like he had three one leads, three two leads. Well, a three one dude, a, a three one lead in basketball, dog, is like you having like a two touchdown lead in the Super Bowl or a three one lead in baseball. It don't mean nothing. It, it it's about how your team goes. He did everything he was supposed to do. The other team he played, I kept telling you, they switched the plan up on them. So his coach, which was who was his coach then? Mr. Three and One, who blow all three ones, Doc Rivers, who doesn't adjust well. He has always been known not to adjust well, even with the Celtics when they lost that second championship. Oh my, thank you. That second championship, he didn't adjust well in that series. He left his guys out there longer than what they were supposed to be. Then he went to the Clippers. The same issues that Paul had was the same issues T-Mac had. They were up 3-1, and what happened? They lost it because he doesn't know how to adjust in the clutch situations. Now, I agree with you. T-Mac did have some failures where he should have stepped up more. I agree, but I just can't take – I've seen this guy 
with the teams he had. Even in Houston, he wasn't the same T-Mac in Houston. He wasn't. He had back spasms and he had bad legs from all them years in Orlando carrying that sorry-ass franchise. And yes, I'm an Orlando fan, but they're a sorry-ass franchise. They just are. They, they, don't, they don't put the right pieces around their stars. And when Shaq left, they couldn't put the right pieces around Penny. So Penny was doing the same thing T-Mac was doing, except he got hurt worse than what T-Mac did. So I can't blame him for all of that when he did his part. Now, Steph Curry, Steph Curry had Klay Thompson, had probably one of the greatest benches we've ever seen in a long time, and he had a great supporting cast around him. So Curry could get off and he didn't have to carry the load like T-Mac did. That's all I was saying. He didn't have to carry the load like T-Mac did. T-Mac's second score was Mike Miller. Steph's second score was Klay Thompson. I'll take Klay any day. He never run the 10. You said what? He never run the team. Yeah, he can be the – he's the he's the highest score on the team, but he never runs the team, like being the best – the question that would make the team better and stuff like that. He never does that. He never made Golden oh, State better. Guard, yeah. As a point guard, yeah, he wasn't like the floor general per se. No, he, he gets all. He gets about. It's all stat about him. But it's as not, far, but, but as far as shooting and impact, I give you that. He had. He was a better shooter, and he did have more impact than T Mac did. But T-Mac was in a different era than what Steph was in. Steph's in an era where he could be more impactful, whereas T-Mac was in an era you were just coming off the Jordan era, and then you were entering the Shaq and Kobe era, and then you had Allen Iverson in between that just dominating. So I can't blame him for his losses and failures like that when his teams never could compare to the teams he played against. And even in Houston, I agree with you, he had a better team than he had in Orlando, but Yao Ming was always hurt. They never yeah. had a consistency with their team. So his career to me was incomplete. If I could see if he had this and that, then I could be like, I would agree with you. If he was healthy all the way through, or even in the position where his teams were on that level, or if Yao Ming was healthy like that, I would agree with you. I'd be like, yeah, T-Mac should have did better. But his career is incomplete to me because of injuries, not only to him, to his teams. His teams are always hurt. And then he played in a sorry team in Orlando. Granted, we had Grant Hill. Grant Hill was still fucked up from Detroit because he almost yeah. died yeah. from a staff yeah. infection. <laughs> he almost died from yeah. that shit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Cause I'm, I just, I just feel like this, man. Yeah, Orlando team. Yeah, I mean, it's a little tough. But at the same time, dog, like he was going to get Charlotte. Like was Charlotte really that much better? I mean, I felt like it was about even that series. You know what I mean? Like Jamal right. Bashburn, he was injured too, off right. and on. Like right. or Charlotte, it was just like Baron Davis and was David Wesley on that team? Yeah, um, that Charlotte I team. Hold on, yeah, let me see. It was, was it? Yeah, I can't remember the full roster of that team or whatever, but hold on, off the top I'm, of my head. Hold on, I'm finna bring it up. You gotta look at the coaching and all that too. Cause I know Paul Silas. Paul Silas was the coach of that team. I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. He was. Hold on. Let me see. Was it? Okay, yeah, it was Barry, Baron Davis. T.J. Brown, Elden Campbell, Scott Burrell, Hersey Hawkins, McGlure, oh, Mashburn. Milwaukee okay. lost. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> okay, let's see. You had um, yeah, it was the second year. The first year they lost to the Bucks. Um, uh, never mind. I was off a year. My bad. My bad. Okay, it's the roster when um Charlotte and Yeah, you got Baron. Okay. Yeah, you got Baron. Um, <laughs> David Campbell, McGlure. P.J. Brown, Augman, Nailin, Lynch, Trailer, Drew, Haston, and Mashburn. Let's see, Orlando, 
You have McGrady, Armstrong, Hudson, Garrity, Monty Williams, Patrick Ewan, Mike Miller, Horace Grant, Don Reed, Jub Bushler, Andrew DeClerc. Oh, my God. I hated Andrew DeClerc. Oh, God. He was <laughs> yeah, so he was, fucking he was trash. Awful. Jaron Jackson. Yeah, Pat, Man, he had a trash Pat, team. Yeah, they was yeah, old. Yeah, you and your horse, they was cooked. Yeah, they, they was, was done, they was dog. Body. Like, I feel you. Like I said, I would agree with you, man, because you know your shit. Like I say, I respect everything you bring, dog, because, you know, Armstrong and Hudson gave him 15. Armstrong gave him 15, and then Hudson gave him 13. The Hornets had Barron with 25, Wesley with 16, Campbell with 13, McGlure with 13, and P.J. Brown with 12. I'm sorry. Charlotte had a better team, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I just – I, I, I look, look, okay. they just had a better okay. team, bro. I, I That Charlotte team, that team was nice because I remember that team. Um, Paul Solis was the coach, man. That team was nice. They was winning some games they weren't supposed to win that year. So, I, like I said, I would agree with you, you know what I'm saying, man. I would be like, C-Pen, you right. But, dog, T-Mac had some bad teams, yo. We was watching them. Like, I was – I was, you know, I'm an Orlando fan to the death. It's, them teams was horrible, dog. I, I can't blame them for that, bro, because they was trash, yo. <laughs> we had – ju- We had Andrew the clerk. When they brought the clerk in, I said, the clerk? I said, are you serious? And then we had Daryl Armstrong. I couldn't stand him. Oh God, my cousin, my cousin, my cousin used to joke with me like, "Man, y'all got Daryl Armstrong." I said, "Bitch, don't make me knock your ass out. I'll punch you dead in your shit right now. I will punch your ass right now." You know what I'm saying? So let's yeah. go. Let's go to the Houston Rockets. Let's pull his shit up. But, but real quick with that, that Orlando Charlotte series, man. Here's my thing with that series, dog. In game three, when that game went to overtime, dog, I I was so disappointed, T Mac, because look, I get it. It's extra minutes in overtime, all right? But the fact you didn't take a shot, bro. Not one field goal attempt in that overtime, bro. Like, yeah. It, it was, just, it, was, it was disappointing, man. I'm sorry. I'm like, dog, y'all at least trying to bring that mug home, man. At least B. Diddy was um, shooting the rock and getting to the foul line. Like, like, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, man. I mean. <laughs> y'all need to ask him what was going on. Uh, if D might ain't taking no shot, there's something going on. I mean, I think he, I, I think he was done at that point, dog. He was spent, <laughs> cause you gotta understand, B Diddy still had other guys who he could get a ball to, he could chill for a bit. T Mac was the whole team. He was our offense. He was our defense. He was everything, and he was just he was gone. <laughs> so, cause I remember that series, cause my cousin, he from Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, in that, that, but then that Rockets, and the, when he was with the Rockets, um, in that Utah, no, it was not Utah, but the Dallas series, the first time he was in the playoffs with Houston, like they was battling throughout the entire series. But then they well, the first, seven, dog, you get smacked by forty points, bro. Well, the first time. 40. Hold on, let me see. Good what? A, well, the first time. <laughs> Yeah, when it was at Dallas, they lost four to three. Um, let me see. Down with them the entire time. You get smacked in game seven like that. In game seven. Hold on, I'm going to look at it now. Let's see. Yeah, because they won game six. I remember and that. that. Was on Dallas. They was up two zip on Dallas in that series. Yeah. 
Let me see. G Mac had for the game. T Mac had 27. Yao Ming had 33. Um, everybody else was trash. Wesley had seven. Oh, God. They had Scott Padgett and Bob Sewer. Oh, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, C Pen, dog. That, I gotta give my boy some love, man. T Mac ain't played with no good teams, dog. This nigga Dallas had Michael Finley, Josh Howard, Navisky, Dan Pierre. You had Stackhouse off the bench. And then they. <laughs> yeah, dog. But, fam, despite all that, dog, you was up two zip in that series, dog. Two zip. Like, what does Man, two, I don't mean, that, that, that don't mean anything, dog, in the game like that. You know that. You talking about back then? You ain't talking about these days? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got to understand, dog. It's a team game, dog. Dirk and them had I like, they had like five or six people or seven balling. It was T Mac and Yao Me. That was it. <laughs> I, I get that, bro. I get that, bro. That's just like uh, LeBron in 2015. He had a what? He had a 2-1 lead on the Warriors. <laughs> right, right. He had a 2-1 lead. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He had a 2-1 lead. And the next series against Utah. And then the next series against Utah, like the year after uh, the injury riddle season or whatever. They was up to all your time. It could have changed the deal. Yeah, man. I don't know. I just can't. I just can't take. I don't know. I can't take. I can't take. I can't take I can't I can't take Steph over him, dog. I just can't, dog. The dude could do way more. Cause I'm looking at this because this Houston team was way better than that first one in that first playoff appearance. I mean, this team, you got Ray for Austin, Shane Battier, um, Luther Head was a good point guard coming out of college in Illinois. Um I mean the Cam Bay for veteran leadership. Um, Bozzy Wells. Hold on, what was this? This was on um, against the Jazz. All six, all seven. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed like yeah. He had a better team. Let's see. Let's see the series stat. You had. Yeah, you he was going against Boozer, Williams, O'Kerr. Yeah, I remember that team. Yeah, Fish was on that team that year. Yeah. That first round, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, he should have won that first round against the Jazz. Now, the next year after that, I'll definitely shoot him some bail on that because they just got whooped by Utah that next year. Yeah, I give you that. Yeah, he should have won a couple of those years. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, because he had 27. And yeah, y'all mean didn't even play. Y'all mean didn't even play in that series. He was hurt. I remember that. Yeah. But T Max still had like twenty seven and I don't know, I just think he couldn't close. 
Yeah, because I remember that. Because I think the next year, um, he was hurt. Yep, and Yao Ming came back, and uh, they finally got the first round. He's Portland. All right. And Yao was balling that series. Yeah, yeah, I was. And then they had um they had Ron Artest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, was well balanced team then. I mean Skull was average sixteen, Yao was average sixteen, Artest was average sixteen, Aaron Brooks average fifteen, Bob Wafer average ten, Shane Bay, oh, man. Shane Bay now. F that. I'm still taking my dog T Mac <laughs> over Steph Curry, dog. F that. I'm still taking him over, over Steph, nigga. I'm saying I see Steph close, dog. That's all I'm saying. Close. Yeah, he should close, I, I, nigga. When you ain't gotta I feel you know. When you ain't gotta do Listen, it all I, yourself. But listen, I love watching T Mac, bro. I love watching T Mac, dog. Those years in Orlando and Houston, I love watching. Listen, I played with him on NBA Street, by one and two often, bro. I'm taking <laughs> T Mac over Steph, dog. I'm sorry. I still do it. I still <laughs> take T Mac over Steph. I would take hey. Steph teams uh-huh. over T Mac any day, bro. And I was hoping to T Mac on NBA Live, bro. So <laughs> I ain't talking about NBA Live. I'm just saying I would take um, <laughs> I would take him over Steph. Steph had way better teams. I feel you, but that's that Houston roster. Steph, man, listen, dog. Uh, that Houston roster, bro. Man, Steph would have closed out them series, dog. I'm sorry. Well, with that Houston roster, yeah, I don't no. think I don't think so. Let Steph have a two zero lead. Let Steph have a two zero lead. Steph closing that mug, dog. Don't say that because what happened to LeBron there? I mean, I remember twenty sixteen. I remember all that. <laughs> but that that was a rare occasion, though. So. That is true. To say. <laughs> he should have closed that day if he's gonna close the other ones. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't think Steph would have fit that team. Let's see, because who was it? Jeff and, Jeff and Gunny was coaching that team. But team that first got there, right? Oh, no fucking wonder. Yeah, he a choker of all of them. He choked with the Knicks. <laughs> I don't trust no Gundy. Both Gundys are trash. Yeah, but I definitely I like Jeff over Stan, but that's not saying much. That's really. not saying nothing. No, that's like saying like I choose I choose this bum down the street over the bum in Beverly Hills. <laughs> that's like saying that I choose this bum over here over the bum in Beverly Hills. Like shit. Like no, nah, they both bums, dog. And then, and then the coach they was going against was Jerry Sloan. So Jerry Sloan out coached them. And then who they had in Dallas? Yeah. Oh yeah, they had your boy in Dallas. That was my guy then. Um, Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson out coached. Man, they did Avery Johnson scandalous, bro. Oh yeah, you already know they did. Yep, yeah, because I remember that Dallas team that beat him. Yeah, that Dallas team was nice because you had Don Nelson, and then he stepped down and gave it to Avery Johnson. And Avery Johnson took him to the playoffs. They went to the um, second round. They lost to Phoenix. And then I think the next year, they, yeah, they went to the championship. They got screwed. They should have won that year because they won 60 wins. And I knew, they, I knew, right. the, heat, I knew the Heat were going to screw them because I bet somebody – yeah, Wade was getting all kinds of calls, bro. Man. Wade was cold, but he was getting all kinds of calls in that final, dog. When he was down 2 old dog, oh, man, those whistles turned up. Man, the- <laughs> they screwed the hell out of them. Man, and then, like, um, I remember Dirk Nowitzki won MVP, and they got the number one seed, and they got bounced by the Warriors. And that team was coached by Don Nelson. Then all of a sudden he got fired. 
Just because he got bounced in the first round. Right. He did. You right. Yeah, it was just like shit happens, dog. You know, it's not like we ain't seen an eight one upset before in the NBA. <laughs> Yeah, because Rick Carlisle came in 08 to 09. Yeah. And yeah, that was awkward as hell for Dirk to take the MVP, to accept the MVP award, and his team was already out the playoffs. Yeah. I would have been like, you can keep that. <laughs> but, for real. But guys, but guys ain't built like that, so. Man, whatever. Steph Curry had a great team around him, nigga. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> had it, yeah. I can't say great coach the second half. He had a good coach in Mark, but yeah, he had Curry. So whatever. Yeah, we ain't know Curry's on. We ain't know Curry's on win chips though. We ain't know Curry's gonna be like that. I, that was more of the players than Curry to me. I knew Curry was. I called Curry was gonna be the best player out that draft. I said that. I knew he was. Cause that really wasn't a strong draft. I was mad when Minnesota yeah, didn't take him. Yeah, he should have yeah, went. Minnesota that trade at him. No, they took Rubio and Johnny Flynn, bro. And don't get me wrong, Johnny Flynn was nice in college, but... Man, Johnny Flynn uh, sucked in the pros. Man. He was so garbage. The thing with him was that he got hurt. He got hurt early on, and I right. think it affected him down the line, so... But I would have I would have definitely took Steph Curry over Johnny Flynn, though. I think he was talking about Minnesota in the drive or Trinidad in the drive, right? No, nah, he's talking about New York. Dom Steph was going to go to New York, and the Warriors jumped him and got him. Oh, all right. Because he was supposed to go to New York. Yeah, the next word, the, the next word that's in line mm -hmm. to pick behind the Warriors. But, yeah. That's crazy. The, the, the next – they was they was, they was was lined up to get – Star um, point guards and some team would jump in front, in front of them to take them. Well, that's the Knicks' fault. The Knicks should have traded up. Uh, no, yeah, right. It is their fault. It is their fault. They should have traded up and everything, and they would have been fine. But that's that's the thing, man. Just, you know these they 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 waited too long. They should have said, you know what, I'm gonna jump up. But they finally got the right people in the front office now, so. Man, that's crazy, C-Pen. We went for, um, man, we went for like six hours, yo, on that stream. <laughs> we broke yeah, records. More like seven. More like seven, including this backstage stuff. Yeah, dog, <laughs> real niggas. This the real nigga shit era. This the real nigga shit out um hour. You know what I'm saying? We spit the truth over the truth. So what you think? You think your you think your um light ass dude who you who you protect gonna do something this year? Oh hell, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Swear, man. <laughs> of course. Remember, at the office line, everything, dog. We made sure we had some depth on that office line, bro. Mm -hmm. So you so so you basically don't agree with Skip when he say the Browns gonna top y'all. <laughs> <laughs> man, Skip Bayless is an Oklahoma Sooner fan, dog. That's why you think the Cleveland Browns gonna go to the Super Bowl because Baker may play for Oklahoma. That's all that is, bro. And he's anti Mahomes on that show, so <laughs> <laughs> this boy is Tom Brady, Baker Mayfield, the Dallas Cowboys. 
Well, at least he got one of them right. At least he got one of them right. <laughs> the other two, I can't really say. Cause sometimes I... you get lucky. <laughs> he said hey. sometimes you get lucky. He be critical on Dollar Cabo these days, though. Ooh. Yeah, but he still want them to go to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, you know he gonna... Oh, no, he know they ain't going to the Super Bowl. He don't talk about that. No, nah, they ain't going to the Super Bowl. I mean, I... Last week on the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, well, I tell you, it was. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if they were with the East. I don't know if they gonna win that weak ass division. You know, the East nah. been rotating every year though for the past like eight years or so. It's like a different winner every year. It seemed like. I mean, their defense has gotten better. They drafted the defense so. I just don't trust Dan Quinn. <laughs> you know. I feel like Dan. I feel like Dan Quinn is kind of like how Gray Roman is, the offense coordinator. Like they start out well when they first arrive to a team, but then it fizzles out over right. time. Right. Man, they just this grown ass man they making millions of dollars and complaining and quitting. That's all it is. So like, dude, you it's like you playing against another man. You just sitting there making that man beat you every time. You talking about, well, it's the game plan. It's the game plan, man. You better find a way to make that man stop beating you. Like you paying, you got to pay all that money. You a top player, dude. Come on, find a way. Sometimes you gotta get off that game plan a little bit. If that man keep beating you on this game plan every time, you gotta find a way to get sneak him. Find a way to get that ball. Well, what like, happened? Get off that well, what happened with Dallas was the thing with Dallas is Jerry Jones puts way too min- too much pressure on those guys. He's always in the media. He's writing checks for them to cash, and he don't have the team like that. You see, Jerry wants to be the face of everything. He That's why Dak fits with him better than most because Dak don't care about the fame. He don't want that shit. <laughs> Dak just want to play football. Jerry wants to basically be the, the spokesperson, the face, and everything. And he always puts pressure on those guys to perform and he always come out like like this past this past week he did the NFL schedule release. He out there with Post Malone. He got the chain on. He making it rain. And then Dak and Zeke walk into it. It's like come on. It's like stop it. You know it is it's just he's an attention seeking whore. Um, to me he's like LeBron. They got to have the attention. If they don't have the attention, then something's wrong. They they're gonna pout like a bunch of babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I seen they come up on the town. I'm like, post my loan. I said, man, what the hell is this, dog? Like, Jerry Jones, man, this dude, he be doing the most. <laughs> right. So now you got you know, post more. Like, people like that, when they pass away, where would the team go? What would the team be? Because they would not be nothing. I think, they'll, I think they'll be better if he's not around. But shoes, if he making himself the fist of the lead every time, everybody just looking at him every time. Now everybody just paying attention to him. When he leaves, nobody gonna pay attention to the players and stuff like that because he always put himself first. And that's the point. They don't need anybody to be focused on them. Dallas need to come into a season where they're not being called the favorite. <laughs> they're not being said they're the best, and I think they will play a lot better. Because they won't have that much pressure on them. But when you come into the season saying, I'm America's team, I'm this shit, which I don't see how they America's team and they stay losing, that's too much pressure. And they fold at the end. So you expect them to fold. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, like I was talking to my boy John about that. And he was like, uh, yeah, you know, does anybody care about America's team coming to Arrowhead? And I was like, no. they still America's team? <laughs> right, right. They it was gonna... like, yeah, the court to the ratings. I'm like, yeah. No, nah, they they with their ass whoop. <laughs> they with their ass whoop going to Arrowhead. Cause when they come to y'all, week what six? 
week 11. Oh, yeah. Y'all gonna give him a nice little ass whooping. <laughs> They'll be yeah, right. right before the bye week. Right before Thanksgiving. All right. You know, so you saying your boy gonna get to the Super Bowl again, huh? So, 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 um, so my homeboy gonna get there again, huh? The only way we have a Super Bowl hangover is if cats get hurt, dog. And like, I feel like we made sure that we have well, some depth on this team, re- dog. We just, remember, we gotta, we gotta make sure Patrick don't get hurt. Remember, C. Pen, the Super Bowl loser usually never gets back. Yeah, I, I know that. I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> One of our key players got to get hurt, dog. I'm just saying, like, I don't know, dog. Has there ever been a team who got back? Well, yeah, the Buffalo Bills. The, the Patriots? Yeah, the Patriots. The Patriots have. No, did the Patriots go to Super Bowl after they lost? That's what they did. At least one of them times. Yeah, they did. Um, they lost to the Eagles, then they went back to play the Rams. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. So you say, so you saying your boy, so you saying your boy, my homeboy gonna get back. So you you think it's gonna be an easy road through the AFC? Nah, I'm not gonna say that because AFC they did improve in the off season. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, I mean you got you got Cleveland, you got Buffalo, you got Baltimore. I mean those are the three teams for sure. Man, he ain't getting back though. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> he said he ain't gonna get back. So what's up, CP? I'm still waiting on to say who we got from the AFC. From the AFC? Yeah. Yeah. It was football is too early right now to say who you got because oh, you got to see the ball, man. Mm-hmm. It's a whole brand new season. It's not like last year where they ain't had no all season, all that stuff. So this year, everybody having all season, all that. So we're going to see. We're starting all over. We got to see how players then come back and stuff and be how they're going to react, how they're going to play together and stuff. Because last year, when it was playing the regular season, it was also learning how to play together. So it was different for other teams that. They didn't really, that was bringing new players in and stuff like that. It was different for them. So players who already played together, it was easier for them to be able to learn how to do stuff and other stuff, beat other teams then because they already know how to play together. But now everybody got that opportunity to learn together and all that stuff before the season began. So that's what I'm saying. It will be hard for me to pick a team right now because I don't know how all the teams going to look like right now because the season is different from last year to pick which team you think gonna win and all that stuff. But I can say the patrons, the patrons will be good this year. I can say they will make it to the playoff this year because like oh they're bringing more players than in. They are more players. They do this and do that. I can say they can go with Belichick and all the coaching staff they get. They can probably make a North to go to that to the interviews to the finals and stuff like that. But I don't know yet because it's they're bringing all the players then coming back and new players then coming back. It's a whole brand new stuff going on. So I got to see the first few weeks and stuff like that and see, oh, okay, now I can pick and choose. Like, okay, yeah, I seen how they're playing, then doing this, doing that. In a few games from now, they will really click and I can say, okay, yeah. I think they can win the championship and do this and do that. But for me, picking right now, wouldn't it be fair to all the teams? And wouldn't it be fair to me? It would just be me picking from my heart. And I don't want to pick from my heart and stuff like that. But if I pick it from my heart, I will always pick the Patriots. I'm a Patriots fan. So I'm oh, always Oh, man. The See, you was going on the right uh, track to uh, drop uh, these man. bullshit Patriots. Man. Hey, bro, I'm telling you, if you want me to bet with my eye, I'm going to tell you. I'm man, the, the Patriots oh, ain't the make, best. dude. The Patriots ain't making it to no playoffs. How? Who they, go, who they going to beat? So you think you guys will beat the Dolphins and the Bills to get into the playoffs? Yeah. 
Man, yep. I, I thought C Penn was delusional about them damn didn't, didn't we beat the Didn't we beat the Bills last year? I mean, you guys we didn't beat the Bills. Uh, nobody, right? Didn't y'all lose twice to the Bills? No, I think we beat them once. No, y'all beat the um Jets twice. Yeah, no, I don't. The Jets don't come, man. We whooped the Jets. Yeah, the Jets don't come. The Jets, we just brought this on the Jets. But but HD, how the hell am I on the lose about the Chiefs, bro? I'm at least saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can lose about two of y'all going back. Y'all ain't going back to the championship. I'm talking about making the playoffs. Man, when it comes <laughs> to them, when to it comes to them cheesy fan boy, you do not see it. I told you last year, going to the Super Bowl, I said, bro, them two tackles y'all lost. You was like, f that. We still for the win. I said, all right, dog. I told you, them two tackles. That's the thing. Them two tackles yeah, are I- very key against a team like the Bucks who like the blitz. Yeah, but I thought I thought he was gonna run the ball a little more. But on top of that, dog, we got all kinds of distractions Dude, going this, on with the this, barber this Andy and then Reed. Andy Reid's son being stupid. Right, you right, know what I mean? right. This is Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, dog. He he does not run the ball. <laughs> 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 I told you that. I said, bro, Andy Reid is going to be our downfall. I'm telling you. Why you think Andy Reid haven't won the championship until then? But nigga, we was running the ball when we won the bowl, though. Like Damian Wills was getting got over twenty touches in that Super Bowl we won. Well, in that Super Bowl, y'all. That well, in that Super Bowl, y'all won that Super Bowl C pin because Jimmy Garoppolo sucks, and I knew y'all would win. And because <laughs> Kyle Shanahan doesn't know how to, how do I say it? His problem is he loves to throw the ball a lot. And this is this the same thing Sean Payton goes through. They love uh, to throw the ball. They, right, right. No, no. No, they in the big game. Be forgetting this running game. Right, 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 right. <laughs> well, Andy Reid does too, but Andy Reid was going to win against him in the Super Bowl. I, because Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't that type of quarterback. And plus, Kyle Shanahan is young. He's Brass, you know, he loves to pass the damn ball. He's a pass happy dude. So I knew they were gonna lose because he was gonna deviate the run game. He did he did it with the Falcons. He should have been running the ball. Yep. He kept throwing the damn ball. It's like why? Y'all up twenty eight to three. You wanna throw the ball. Yep. Yep, I knew we still had a chance right then and there. I'm like, dog, because we was getting killed in the running game, bro. Now this was running all over us, bro, in that first half. And this- Second half, he just went away from for some reason, dog. I'm like, we still got a chance, bro. He gonna keep giving us possessions like this. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all owner went over there and slipped them a two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your owner, your, your owner went over there like this, saying, yeah. "Good job, good job." All right, we got a Super Bowl. Tell Pat, tell Pat, to stop fucking up. Tell Pat to stop fucking up and check down, <laughs> nigga, and then throw it when he need to, and he'll get open. <laughs> that that that's all that happened, you know. But you know, you got y'all Super Bowl. You know, I, I'm glad for y'all because y'all did deserve it. Y'all haven't had a Super Bowl since you know before you was thought of. That was fifty years, bro. right? Right, 50 yeah, years, bro. Right before you, <laughs> right before you was thought of, you know. Before you weren't even a twinkle in your mom eye, you know, yeah, I got you. You know, Shoot, I hope y'all don't wait another fifteen years. Well, you know, it's it's well at least well well at least it ain't like the Carolina Panthers, you know. You know, when Tampa get there, you know, we win. You know, we don't we don't choke. You know, the Chiefs get there, they at least got one. I mean, well, they got two total, but um. You know, I can't speak for the Panthers and Christian. You know, Christian and them, they try to get there, but you know, they 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 suck so bad they gotta go bandwagon to the Boston Celtics, you know, their championships. So <laughs> well, And when the Pistons get there, we win, huh? The, the Pistons? The Patriots. The Patriots. 
Well, yeah. y'all, well, y'all had Tom Brady. You know, y'all got oh, Belichick. Oh, no. I don't, I don't, I don't know about. That. I mean, y'all I just never been. A, I've never been a. No, no, I've no, never no, been a no, fan no, of Belichick. No. I mean, dog, no, no, y'all, y'all had Brady. Brady. Tom Brady yeah. had the Patriots. Dog. Y'all, 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 y'all remember? Y'all remember this year? I mean, y'all remember last year? The first five games. Tom Brady went out of the Patriots way, and he tried to do the Buccaneer ways, and what was happening? No, no, no. Bruce Arians tried to do the Buccaneers way, yeah, and yeah, Brady yeah, had to let. And, and what and, and, and what happened in that bye week? Bru- Tom Brady cussed his ass out and showed him the rings. And ever since then, what happened? They played what Brady wanted, right? Yeah. The way the Patriots play. No, the so Patriots. Bill Belichick, I keep telling you, Patriot fans, you guys, it's fine. Y'all don't have to listen to me. Y'all been spoiled. Y'all like Cowboy fans. Y'all like Cowboys fans. Y'all been spoiled with Super Bowls, and y'all got so many. It's like, bro, <laughs> the thing is this. Bill Belichick's problem is he – he he's he's too much of a mad genius. Him, Sean Payton, they have this problem. They gotta prove you wrong. When you don't have nothing to prove, what, what do you have to prove? All you have to do is go out there and play. Now his first Super Bowls they won. That defense was Bill Parcells defense. It was yeah. Willie McGinnis. Um, Vrabel, Bruce, Ty, Ty Law, and then Laurie and then Malloy. all. Now I'll give him this: when y'all lost Lawyer Malloy, y'all brought in Harrison. That made y'all better. I give y'all that because I always felt Harrison was slightly better than Malloy. But y'all had I Malloy. Like Harrison. Y'all had Malloy, and then y'all brought Harrison in, and y'all took off. Now after that, <laughs> y'all defense got old. Your defense was costing you guys a lot of games. And Belichick's problem was he was too busy trying to say, oh, well, I know everything. Y'all got rid of Richard Seymour too soon, way too soon. Y'all should have kept Richard Seymour a little longer. Y'all would have been fine. Y'all lost that Super Bowl. Y'all lost that Super Bowl against the Giants because of what? Your defense. Tom Brady threw the game-winning touchdown to Randy Moss in the corner of the end zone. Your defense gave up. Your defense gave up that drive because Bill Belichick doesn't know how to adjust on defense. He thinks he's smarter than what he is. Now, let's go to the next Super Bowl um, you guys played. Hold on, before you do that, before you do that, yeah. They dropped. They also dropped two interceptions that last. Exactly, drive. Asante right. Samuel, and who else? Um, yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. It's not Bill Belichick because he put you in the position to play, to have to play, and you just didn't have to play. It's not him. He gave you the right play. His his job is to give you the play to execute for you to go in, and your job is to go and go and execute that play, and you didn't do your job. Yeah. So he gave you the right play. You in the position to have that in the session every time, and they didn't come up with it. That's not his fault. And then Tyree Hill catch was some straight up luck, dog. Right, that was luck. <laughs> so that Who was saw luck. That coming? Right. So the next Super Bowl y'all played, y'all played against who? Um. Y'all played against the um y'all played against the Giants. Y'all played against the Giants again. That defense y'all had that whole year, Belichick didn't add to that defense. That defense and everything was poorish. It, it was okay, but it wasn't as good as it's been in the past. And he wasn't adding the depth to that defense like he usually does. Y'all got beat that year from y'all defense. And then nah, Wes nah, Welker nah. dropped the pass. <laughs> he dropped the pass, which could have sealed the game. We got beat that year for our offense, and which is Brady. If we really want to be fair with it, it which is Brady, because if you going to come up and play that defense, the giant defense, and you can't come up with 20 something points, man, you sorry for that year, because you was killing that whole year and for you to not come up with, for when, 
Oh, it's not, but the Giants play. had a front four. If you're the head coach, why didn't you adjust to it? They had the, they had probably the best front four we've seen in a while. And in that second Super Bowl, your consistency was they had Justin Tuck. Justin Tuck was killing y'all. So was Kiwanuka. So was JPP. And you wasn't doing anything to adjust to that. And then defensively, you didn't even stop the play from happening where Manningham caught that clutch catch on the sideline. The defense you was playing was real safe. You wasn't blitzing or sending things at Eli Manning. You was letting Eli sit back there like he was at the picnic. Yeah, I'll say this, though. That was an incredible catch by Manningham. Dog. Right, was, right. I don't know. If, yeah, it was an incredible catch, man. Right. That that game, I blame it all straight up on the offense. And if I'm gonna blame that game on the offense, I blame. I that blame game on... it on the defense, and I blame no, it on Welker. No. Welker in the but defense cost y'all that by game. that offense. Welker in the defense cost you that game. Welker should have caught that pass. If it was anybody else, they would have caught it. It hit your hands. Yeah, big. Big facts. Right. So, Welker and your defense let you down in that game. Now, what was the next Super Bowl y'all played? Y'all played against... Um, it's funny. Yeah. One some, of, some as far as like the other loss. Yeah. The other loss was against the yeah, Eagles. Philly. The Eagles, Philly. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, dog, the Malcolm Butler stuff, dog. Like, exactly. Wow, bro. You bench I'm Malcolm like, Butler. That after the season. Right. Hell, that after the season. Right. You know, take, like, right. Come on. You no, bitched no, your best point. That's the thing, dude. We don't, do, we don't care about we don't care about what the fans and want. No, that's not what we do. If you messed up and fucked up, you take the consequences that day. But he yeah. didn't fuck. But he never explained what he fucked up on. Everybody he on the he dog. Every dude. Everybody to. on the team was sitting there like, what did he do? Everybody was asking. Even Malcolm Butler said, I did nothing wrong. Malcolm Butler know exactly what he do. He gonna come out and say, I did nothing wrong. Because okay, he but dude, when they, when they asked, nothing. okay, but when they asked Belichick, why didn't Belichick say what he did? Why Belichick held it a secret? We, he, 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 he don't have to. He's not going to. We all know he wasn't going to say nothing because people are asking questions. C Pen, C Pen, you buy that bullshit. What you feel? <laughs> as far as Bill Belichick having to say something about it, right? Man, listen, man, like I. I ain't, I ain't buying it, bro. Like like I said earlier, dog. Like you, man, it's the damn Super Bowl, dog. You gonna need all your horses. But like, have this handle that after the season. Dude. Right, right. If no, this was, uh-uh, if uh 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 uh, that's the problem these days. That's why I players they want to run these teams these days. But Eugene, not that but Eugene, but I mean, go ahead, see. Did my brother do anything before? Did Never. He doesn't have a track before? record. If he's had a track record of this happening, then I would agree with you. Okay. Hey, Belichick did what he was supposed to do. <laughs> this guy never got in trouble. He was always on time, sometimes 30 minutes early for where he's supposed to be at. And you bench this guy before the Super Bowl because and you get why. that lame ass excuse? And because then Tom Brady, why. and then Tom Brady, hold on, hold on. Then Tom Brady liked the tweet. Where Malcolm Butler said I did nothing wrong. I don't understand it. I did everything right. So why would Tom Brady, your leader of the team, who has always backed Belichick, even during Spygate, he backed Belichick. Why would he like Malcolm Butler's explanation? Why? Because he was sorry that he just lose that Super Bowl. Oh, God. Dude, Brady, he, he didn't sorry. have nothing. How would he feel sorry? He threw over 500 yards. He exactly. broke a record. Because, because he feel like if Michael Butler was there for one play or two plays, he could have won that Super Bowl. Exactly. So why did you play Malcolm Butler? That's the point. <laughs> hey, I'm a Patriots fan. I'm a Patriots fan. And 
And I know how to picture it out. That's why I never even got mad and nothing about that. Because it's something he did. That's why he on that bed. Dude, so we, if he did, dude, this is what happened. Belichick overthought himself, sat him out, tried to sabotage the season because no, he was ready to no. move on from Brady, and it didn't work because the owner still wanted to go with Brady. They came back the following year. They played the Seahawks. They beat the Sea. Well, that was before. They beat the Seahawks before. The Phillies um, was afterwards. Then they came back, played the Rams. They won the game against the Rams. So why bro, would you cost your was, team if that? Was go, bro, if something was going on, I'm going to be honest with you. I think it was something about contract like was going on. Because – when he he was in his contract year that year, right? And when he did that play after that play, he felt that the next year he was. You know, than you, life. you know what I would have done if I was an owner, I would have fired Bill Belichick that day after we lost the Super Bowl. He would have had his yeah, all his bad. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm I'm about winning. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about all that bullshit. That all that shit is so all, like C Pen. I me, you want to tell me. I agree with C-Pen. If it's off-season, then we deal with that shit. This is the playoffs. You don't get a chance to go back like that. They're just fortunate they went back because they had Tom Brady. But you don't get a chance like that again. I'm firing you after the Super Bowl. If you can't give me a good explanation why you bench my best cornerback, I'm sorry. I'm an asshole. I'm going to cuss your ass. I'm like, look, hey, fuck what? that. Maybe the owner already know. You ain't yet the owner saying nothing about it. No, I think Robert Kraft was tied up with um massage parlors. No. <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't. Nah, and, and, I think, he and, wasn't. I think, and I think he was lost. Not at that time, he wasn't. Oh man! Not at that time, time. he wasn't. I, I just, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just think you making an excuse for um, for um, Belichick, dog. No, it's not an excuse because it's. I'm looking at, I'm looking at it the way I look at the whole organization. Okay, right? so what, like, so, so would if Belichick never won a Super Bowl at that point? Would you still have that same Bowl, energy? Cool. Would you still have that I'm same cool. energy if he sat Butler yeah. out? Yes, even when Man. Belichick won that bro, Brady, no, bro, I, I'm gonna be on. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Patriots fan. I, I don't have, I don't have no love for anybody special on the team. I just love the team, the way the team, or the way the team runs, the way the organization carry themselves, and all that stuff. That's why I love the team. So whatever, whatever decision they come up with, I always accept it because they always. You will always yeah play this it's the players they complaining. I ain't hear nobody in the organization like B parts in the organization complain. If I hear the owner say something about that, then I will kinda have like, oh, what's going on? And stuff like that. But I ain't hear the owner saying nothing about it. Oh yeah, it's oh Brady has said Brady said, Oh, he liked the tweet. This or I'm like, that's players then that's feeling stuff. That's what they're doing. It's it's in their feeling because they feel like if he was gonna play that game we could have won that game, but there is something he did. It's something real that he did that make him didn't play that game because we seen brother Chap bench players there before. I seen that a lot of times that he bench players there before, and I be like, what the heck he doing on the bench? But I know he just did something, and because the next game he played or he playing or he playing the next half, I was like, damn, you just had this nigga sitting on the whole half the whole time, and we could have used this nigga. And you gonna bring the nigga in this half now? Like, what the heck wrong with you? Uh, but I know he just did something, so I be like, okay, shit, that nigga caused the trouble. He did punishment. Now I get on the field and go do what you gotta do. It's I never had no problem. So whenever he do stuff like that, I look at it like your players don't want to complain. Brady did his, his stuff, so, so I always say Brady stuff. It just the feeling because he feel like he got a he he had that game to win. And when Ben when Wesley was gonna play. He was gonna win that game. That's why I said Brady in his feeling that he feel his feeling get him to say he liked that tweet that man I had that game man I threw for the most yard did the most and all that and you just take my best player away from me. Man, so, I would have fired oh, Belichick. Belichick should have got fired. Brady don't even know why. You know 
If Brady don't know why, why you think we? Dude, it wasn't just why. Brady. It was the team and Malcolm Butler. Because usually when something like that no. happens, they leak no, the I information. Don't. They let you know why the player doesn't play. This happens all the time. Nobody came out with any statement. Even the coaches were confused at why he was benched. Hold on. Your coaches were surprised at why he was benched. If your coaches and the players are surprised, nigga, you are fucking up. Bill Belichick cost him that Super Bowl because of ego. He wanted to prove that he could do this without Malcolm Butler for whatever reason, I don't know. He's like Sean Payton. They're so smart, they're dumb a lot of times. He got exposed. Now, when you do that and you don't have an explanation for that, I'm sorry. As an owner, you should have had him lose his job right then and there. That is that's the Super Bowl. Why that's why I'm saying, bro, because he had an explanation for it, but the explanation was given to the owner. It wasn't what was what was the, what, what was the explanation he said to the media it and everybody? Was, that's what I'm what, what was the explanation? What was the explanation? I don't know, because we not seen it. Guess not what? Seen the that not bullshit. Seen the it. it was that bullshit. <laughs> it was that we bullshit. It was have that bullshit. Owner, have you seen the owner say anything about that? Uh, on why I mean he didn't say nothing about it for what because everybody knows it's bullshit. It's like he didn't say he nothing said, because Belichick said, at that no, point he said, he said something when when he said something when when Brady when he went he to didn't Brady, say Brady. nothing because at that point Bill Belichick had what four or five Super Bowls so that's why he didn't say nothing. But if Belichick hasn't won any Super Bowls at that point. He didn't win anything, and he did that move. Belichick ass would have been fired. That's just facts. I'm sorry. He only he got that no leeway. Fact. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a different situation. Right. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. I'm a person that's consistent. If your ass didn't have Super Bowls, you would be fired. But up to that point, he had all these Super Bowls. He was filling his little nuggets in his pants. He was filling himself. So he felt like I could do what I want. That's what I took it as as Belichick. That's who Belichick is. And you he, see, that's how that's how I take it too. Because I see, I take it this way too. I seen it like I've been seeing this organization the way they run this stuff and they've been doing this stuff forever, and nobody had no problem with it. But now because they're doing the Super Bowl, everybody want to have a problem with it. I don't look at. You, if you want to get a problem with it, get a problem with it when he's doing it. Like every time he do it, get a problem with it. Don't get a problem with it when he's doing it. Well, I've always had a problem with Belichick. I can't speak on everybody else. Me, I've always had a problem with Belichick. I feel he's an arrogant bastard. He didn't give Tom Brady the credit he should have gave him. I think he feels like it was only him. The reason why they were in position they were in, which to me is bullshit. To me, it takes all three phases of your team. You have to have a great offense, a great defense, and a great special teams. If one of those things are fucking up, nine times out of ten, you're not going to win at all. That's how I look at it. And I felt I'm glad Brady won last year because he stuck it to Belichick and he basically showed it wasn't just Belichick. I also had a key part in us winning. And I felt like he, in the later years of his career, he was carrying that team a lot because Belichick wasn't doing his job to supply him with talent as well as He's, build that right, defense right, yeah, up. Yeah, that means, he didn't that build that defense that. up. Right. That's all I feel like. Because he couldn't do nothing, bro. Dude, y'all had cap space. Y'all didn't. No, Brady was didn't. taking pay cuts. Brady was taking pay cuts. So how Brady didn't you have money to? How didn't you have money to no. build your defense up? HD, that's why y'all wasn't getting. Brady was taking pay cut. It wasn't for him to bring players. It was for him to keep these players then there. Like all these, like all these, like Wes Walker and stuff and like that, for him to keep them there. But we rather than have no money like that to go get other players because. Oh, that's a lie, man. Y'all had, dude, y'all didn't sign nobody with no big contracts. Y'all cut people before their worth. But they still walk with some money. 
Dude, y'all cut. Dude, y'all got y'all either. We, have, we still had twelve million dollars on Hernandez. That wasn't even playing with us. Dude, his yeah. stuff gets in it. His stuff gets in it. That's why we got all that. We had all this. We had money on what's his name on on this time. The time that play with with. Okay, with so Brady. so why did y'all go out? Why did y'all hit the free agent market this year heavy? But the other years you had because Brady. Why didn't you do the same that's thing? What, that's when the cat. That's when we get the we get the cash pay this year. All our money came this year. That's what I'm saying. All our money came this year. We got all that money this year because now we own up. We off Hernandez. We, we don't. We, he on our stuff no more. So we got our money. C P. What you think, guy. man? What you think, C P. We don't have to pay him no more and stuff. So we got that money now. We don't have to pay what's the name, Frankowski no more. Because we was paying. Y'all was not we paying. Y'all was not paying Gronkowski like that. No, y'all wasn't. What? <laughs> Dude, y'all yeah, wasn't. I'm about to say, no way. No. Y'all was not no paying way. Gronkowski. No, Dude, no. Tom Brady. Before, okay. Before, before Gronkowski rescheduled his contract and he was like the top paid talent. Dude, no, he. Dude, yo, y'all was not paying money like that. Your top quarterback. Tom Brady has been probably the best quarterback the past 15, almost 20 some years. He was not taking big money like that. Y'all still had enough money to grab players because when he oh. signed his contracts, he gave y'all enough money to go sign people. Why do you think no, he left New England? The money was used. That's what I know what you're saying, but the money was used to keep these players from leaving because most of the players They still left. Dog, y'all didn't keep nobody. What did you talk about? Who? Because, it, because the last, when, when did they leave? The last two, I mean the last three years. When we read it, they didn't have no money now to do all that extra stuff no more. And Dude, y'all had money. Dude, Tom Brady is taking pay cuts damn near every year. What are y'all doing with the money? It's spread out. You got to keep that. It is not spread. So you mean to tell me you overspent for all of these players and y'all didn't have no money? They signed high tower to an extra... They signed most of the defensive players. Man, that to contract high tower got don't take up that much cap space. But you sign him, then you ain't sign it, Okay, you, you can sign somebody, but their money doesn't well, affect I, the cap yeah, like I that. We had that much money. We wasn't in the top. Man, that yo, that, that motherfucker money. Bill Belichick was taking that money and yeah, going to Dubai. Time, really? A pay cut, he caught like twenty million dollars on his pay cut. No, it wasn't like that, <laughs> dude. It was nothing like that. This nigga, Bill Belichick, was at the strip club with that money. He was dropping none no, but hundreds. We was winning championship though. Yeah, because Tom Brady. So if you take Tom Brady off all those teams, y'all win Super Bowls. Because he can't. Hold on, no, 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 no. You doing like LB? No, I gotta hold you on the spot. If I take Tom Brady off of all those teams, do y'all win a Super Bowl? No. My point exactly. <laughs> you want to know why? You want to know why? Be why? You want to know why? Why? The team were built around Tom Brady. No, it wasn't. The first three Super Bowls, that team was built around Bledsoe. Bledsoe got hurt. Brady stood in and won because he managed the game better than Bledsoe. Bledsoe was a walking turnover said. machine. And, 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 and managed the game, yes. Right, because Bledsoe was a turn. Bledsoe got hurt. Bledsoe got hurt that year. Brady stepped in. Y'all struggled the first couple games. Belichick said, I'm going to stick with him. Y'all stuck. Y'all caught fire. Brady was converting a lot of third downs because y'all was in third downs a lot of times. He was converting it. He got y'all to the position where y'all played the Raiders. Y'all cheated the Raiders that year on that bullshit tuck rule. Y'all got to the Super Bowl. Y'all got to the Super Bowl. Brady and them won that game because you guys got physical with the arm rams. Y'all defense got out physical them, and then he was able to manage the game. The Rams came back. He got him in position. 
Vinatieri kicked the field goal. He got the ball down there. The, the He was never picked to be the guy for that team. Belichick didn't even draft him. Belichick and them thought he was just some other guy. He didn't get in until exactly. Bledsoe got hurt. Brady saved y'all. After that, he saved y'all again the next Super Bowls. Belichick see, got the not, big head. No, I'm telling you. Belichick. That's not fair, though, because if you want to say that, if you want to say Brady Trey is that, that bugging and stuff, he could have said, fuck that. that. Get that nigga out of here and, pull my, and put the starting quarterback back in there. But no, you know why he didn't. No, you know why he didn't do it. He saved his job. He saved his job. They even have reports out saying that Belichick was going to get fired that year because y'all started out his first two or three years there. Y'all suck. He was doing bad. He was That's doing bad before That's Brady got in. Wasn't going to get fired that year. Dude, yet it's reports out there saying that the coaching staff That's was the looking That's for other saying. places they to stay. They want to boost. They want to boost. I mean, I love Brady too. Trust me, I love Brady because he gave me all that rank. But the boosting stuff, then I don't like that type of stuff because they just said something like that to boost Dude, up. Like, Brady oh, made y'all team. Dude, it's, it's the same work. thing with – okay, it's the same thing with Pat Mahomes. Alex Smith or Pat Mahomes? I'm taking Pat Mahomes. He makes my offense better. I yeah. can run more stuff. Okay, that's what Brady did with y'all. He made y'all yeah. team better. So if you didn't have Brady, y'all would have lost that year. Belichick would have been out of a job. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Cause he Bro, was playing that, piss poor that y'all, year. Why can y'all, why can y'all never say it this way? Why can y'all never say Belichick find somebody that he knows he can work with and somebody who he knows? Because he, he never picked Brady. He never had dude Hold on, AD. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, Eugene. Y'all better be thinking yep. Moe Lewis would not get Drew Bledsoe out that game, bro. Right. That's all I got to say. Right. right. Well, no, Tony Edward got on that field, dog. Never. He would have never got on that we field. Know, we never knew that Bledsoe wasn't going to get injured. But when he got injured and he came back, we knew that Brady was better than him, so we never switched. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Brady made you guys as much as y'all exactly, want to give bro. Belichick credit. Me, listen, Belichick like didn't build y'all team. You guys had the team from Parcells. All Belichick did was he would go grab free agents and some of them would be hits and some of them would be misses. In the draft, Belichick has been terrible drafting. His draft record, he gets an F, dog, out of all the experts. It's because he's that? able to pick up veterans. Because y'all haven't had Because he doesn't know how to build a team. How many people he drafted that you say is F? I mean, you guys drafted Dante Hightower. He hit. Who else? Vince Wilford, he hit, but that wasn't him who picked it. Y'all had a GM there. Belichick became the GM, I believe, around 2010 or 11. And after that, his picks were garbage. He used to no, get no, a lot no. of free agents. Oh, he picked up good no, free no, agents. No, 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 bro. His offensive pick, you think you can say his offensive pick and stuff that he used on the first, I mean, the first or second round was garbage. You cannot say his defenses pick was garbage. None of his defenses pick have ever been garbage. Yes, they have Even been. The sixth round, the sixth round, all of them. None of them have ever been garbage. Yes, they have been. The only guy he probably hit on was I say High Tower. Gilmore, where's Gilmore from? Buffalo, right? Yeah, Gilmore. Malcolm Gilmore Butler. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Malcolm Butler. Yeah. He wasn't drafted. He was picked up. N nah. Oh, wait a minute. Did he, did he draft nah. Devin McCourty? No, nah, we got him. No, he didn't draft Devin McCourty. McCourty came from somewhere else. He came to the team. He drafted one of the brothers. Yeah, he drafted one. 
Who? McCordy? He dropped one. Who? Yeah. McCordy? Yeah. He dropped that one. Hold on. He you... been on that team forever, bro. Yeah. Who is it? Which one is it? Devin? Yeah, I think the one with the jet is. Okay, he drafted him. Yeah, you're right. He got Devin. The other one was Jason that came. Yeah, then, like, uh, Gerard Mayo was decent. Yeah, Mayo was okay. So, who else? Who else did he draft that was great? Because I gave you Dante Hightower. You got Devin McCourty. Who else? The Jackson kid right now. What Jackson kid? The, the, the corner kid he got. JC Jackson, he's all right. He got still some more to prove. I mean, all his all his defenses play on their hit. All his defenses he's have been trash, dog. Y'all defenses want raw, but for the first three Super Bowls. <laughs> and the Rams. He got the Chandler Jones too, but he's in Arizona now. Right, he picked up Chandler Jones. And then he let him go. And he and he came back. He came back and played on his better yeah yeah again. Then he go again. He played good, but he let him go and he played his best year in Arizona. Not really. I don't know, we'll see. Belichick overrated, dog. I'm sorry. Bro, it's not it's not about better chat. That's why you probably get to be confused. You think I gave him better chat to pray. I'm not giving better chat no praise. That's why I've been telling people it's not about better chat or nothing. It's the organization. Period. I just care about the organization how they run. Because when when I see better chat ain't giving me no 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 explanation of why he did stuff and I see the owner is not even talking about it and stuff like that because I know now he and the owner already not talk about it. So he already not tell the owner why they already not talk about it. When Jim, when Butler come in on that stuff and saying, I don't know, I take that stuff to be, yeah, dude, I know what you playing. You playing that mind game stuff. He so not, how you playing? Play why would Butler play a mind game thing because and he, he tried, wants to he play in the to Super make, Bowl. He tried to make him come out there and say something. Okay, but why didn't no? Something. This is my thing. If you did something wrong, everybody's going to say you did something wrong. It leaks out. It's told. Everybody says he did nothing wrong. That's the problem. No, they said they don't know. Okay, but if you don't you know, okay, but you still would know if your best player is not on the field, you're going to want to know. It, you know it doesn't you know matter. You know that it doesn't you matter. Know know? You owe your team you that explanation. You owe your team that explanation. I don't care. You are the leader of men. How can I trust you? How can I trust you as the leader of men? And you don't give me an explanation of why you benched our best player. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Because he been doing it. No, Belichick. No, Belichick outsmarted himself. No, Belichick outsmarted himself. Thought he could play this sorry ass bum corner y'all had. So that can make his genius look good. And he got exposed. Yeah, Nick Foles we hit his it. ass for. We can call it anywhere we want to call Foles, it. Nick Foles hit his ass for 400. We can call it anywhere we want to call Nick it. Nick Foles hit his ass for 400. <laughs> oh, anywhere or not. Right. And that Belichick's done. Something. Belichick's never winning that another Super Bowl, bro. I guarantee you Brady is going to. I bet you Brady will win one more before he's gone. Belichick ain't going to win one ever again. He's not going to win. What? He's not. He's not, dog, what? because Belichick, I'm telling you, that was what? that was that was lightning in the bottle when y'all got Brady. If y'all wouldn't have got Brady, y'all would have never snipped the Super Bowl Belichick ever. Belichick ain't going to win one ever again. Ever. He's, he's done. He's yeah, done. You know we're going to live for long, No, right? it's I'm done. I'm going to come on here and tell you. That's you fine. You can come on here, and I'm going to tell you every time he don't make it why he ain't make it. Hey. 
I'm, I'm gonna come on your next game and tell you you said we wasn't gonna make the playoffs. You remember that? I didn't and say. Didn't I didn't play. say the playoffs. I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs. I just don't. The I'm AFC not, is too tough. You got probably three I teams. You probably got three teams in the North that can make it, and you probably got three teams in the West that'll make it. The only ones who will probably win y'all division is probably the Bills, and then I think the Dolphins might can sneak in. I just don't trust you guys. I, know the I don't trust your team. Who I proved to us that it was way better than us, but it didn't. Who? That's why I'm saying. Nick, who I proved to us but when it was playing us, like blowing up, beating us so bad that it was way better than us. Because we ain't had nobody. And it wasn't. That's what I'm saying. It's like. If we if we had nobody and y'all wasn't beating us like that and now we get in some of y'all group players, we stole some of y'all group players. Don't we say know. we. I don't fuck and with that AFC East. I don't fuck with AFC East. That's y'all. <laughs> That's y'all. So you're yeah. telling me that you guys are going to get to the playoffs? Yeah. Okay. That sounded real confident. I bet, come, bro. I bet, you, you just don't know me and my team, man. If it comes with my team, I'm I'm one thousand compared confident when I say something. The same way when we were playing the Falcons, and I told my friends then, and when they were saying, "Oh yeah, y'all getting blue," I told them exactly how the game was gonna go, and exactly Dude, how. Dude, that's exactly the Falcons. The, the Falcons always choke, dog. <laughs> they they always <laughs> choke. They choked in, oh, in the no, NFC no, South. No, the man. Bucks own them. The Panthers own them. Like the Saints on. The Falcons ain't nothing but the. They ain't nothing but little brother of the division. <laughs> they always choke. And we knew they was going to choke. Back. <laughs> yeah. Back, yeah, because of Tom oh, Brady. Brady brought y'all back. Right. Brady brought y'all back. If y'all no, had Jimmy no, G. I mean, it, both end of the ball. Both end. Brady brought y'all Brady. back. If Jimmy G was in that Super Bowl, y'all would have lost. Any other quarterback, y'all would have lost. Y'all would so, have, dog. Uh, Brady's a freak. I'm sorry. I, I used to. I, 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 bruh, I don't like Brady. I've never liked Brady. But I give credit where it's due. He's the motherfucker. He is that guy. He brings y'all back. He puts y'all in position. Belichick has cost y'all. That Rams Super Bowl, the only reason y'all held them to, to damn near three points is because Jared Goff can't read a defense. He sucks. I've been telling people Goff sucks. See, Ben, that whole year. Didn't I say that Goff sucked? I said Goff sucked that whole year. He was just making it because teams were not playing him correctly. They weren't running any pressure up the middle. All you had to do was push the middle of the pocket. He's done. He can't read front sevens. He's just like Peyton Manning. They can't read front sevens. The only difference is Peyton Manning was more talented. Brady hit that throw to win the game, putting Grock in position and got y'all the touchdown. If y'all didn't have Brady's mental toughness and his leadership to deal with that bullshit Belichick does, y'all would not have won. You got players coming out, former players saying that Brady's the Patriot way. If it wasn't for Brady, nobody would have followed Belichick. Belichick is overrated, bro. I understand you love him because he got all his accolades now. That's fine. But if any other coach would have done what he done, and they didn't have the hardware to back it up or the quarterback of a Brady caliber to back it up, he would have been gone a long time ago. He would have. It's the facts. No, you could. That's why I say you say that. Yeah, that's the fact, but that's a whole different situation. What has what, what is this coaching staff done everywhere they've gone? They suck. Andy Reid, his coaching tree is better than his. Tony Dungy's coaching tree, better than his. Mike Holmgren's coaching tree, better than him. Bill Walsh, coaching tree, better than his. Why does this man coaching tree suck everywhere they go? Mm. 
He's overrated because you don't have that guy like a Tom Brady to take that, to take being cussed out by Belichick and being talked to any kind of way. That's why they don't succeed anywhere else. They don't have that second in command who will go by what they're teaching. If it wasn't for Brady dealing with all that bullshit he was coaching, they would not have kept the players they wanted. All these players have come out and said that about Belichick. Why would they speak up on Belichick right now? Because they know Tom Brady's Which, gone. You're He's gone. You're talking about the sorry ones then? Who, who they weren't they? sorry. No, no, they were not sorry. No, they were not sorry. Amendola was not sorry at all. No, he wasn't. Amendola was not sorry. Stop it. Stop it. Now, now you sound now now you sound like a, a bitter fan. No. Amendola was not trash. What? Stop Which it. One? He was not trash. Which then you had Asante one? Samuel. Asante Samuel was not trash. He was not trash. You had Gronk speak out about it. He was not trash. So what else you want to say? What? What? What Malcolm, Butler was, Malcolm what? Butler was not trash. Malcolm Butler was not trash. And he spoke out what? about it. Huh? Didn't Gronk have his way when he was in New England? You said what? Grant. When Grant was in New England, what was what Grant limited to doing stop doing anything? Was Dude, he Grant tried to away? trade Gronk. He tried to trade Gronk away. <laughs> what trade you mean? Away. He tried to get rid of Gronk. He traded Willie McGinnis. I'm not Willie McGinnis, Richard Seymour. Richard Seymour talked about him. He just traded you know, Richard Seymour for no I, reason. I, I stopped going up. If I got, if Dog, I got, Richard you know, Seymour was not going like, down, dude. Richard real. Seymour had three more good years in him because when he left and went to the Raiders, he matter, had three bro. more good matter. years, and then it he fell matter. off. That's why I say I don't love. I don't love me. I just love the way they run that. Okay, stuff. but you're not ball. giving Brady it's that credit if you. But you're not giving Brady that credit. Brady is the reason y'all had the Patriot way. It just showed. He went to Tampa and won a Super Bowl. And they had that same defense. So what are you talking about? Like you making it seem like this nigga impact. You making it seem like his impact wasn't strong. Are you serious? This nigga went to a Tampa team who had the same team from last year. They just added A.B., and um, Leonard Fournette. That's it. And they won. And they won. Don't act, don't act that. that team was suck. Don't act that that team was suck. Dude, it's not about. Dude, they went seven and nine. They went seven and nine the year before, or worse. They weren't even a playoff team. They was a laughing stock. They was a quarterback and way. They were a quarterback away, okay. But you're telling me if I put Aaron Rodgers there, would they get to the Super Bowl? I don't know. Exactly, they wouldn't. If I put Drew Brees there, would they get to the Super Bowl? I can say, I can say, yeah, with Drew Brees, they would Drew Brees. Exactly, C Pen. Hell no. The only quarterback I see outside, the only quarterback I see outside of Brady. The only quarterback I see outside of Brady that could have took that team is Deshaun Watson, maybe Russell Wilson, and Pat Mahomes. That's it. The mother guys, hell no. I don't see it. Aaron Rodgers a choke. Aaron Rodgers will throw a pick or he'll throw the ball to the sideline, scared. Drew Brees, he would have threw about two picks. <laughs> it would have been over. So, what? Same thing, exactly. Just like Aaron Rodgers, I had to tell my dog the other day, C. Penn, he a delusional Saints fan. I had to tell him about Drew Brees. <laughs> he gonna try to talk about Drew Brees top five. I said top five and what? <laughs> I would take Drew Brees over Ken Stabler from the Raiders. <laughs> I wouldn't take him over Ken Stabler. You smoking crack. Ken Stabler would have outgunned Breeze. You got to get Drew Brees his credit from where he came from. Drew Brees is not in the top 10. He's probably top 16 to 17, bro. 
Y'all guys yeah, over glorified Drew Brees. Gotta get his credit for where he came from. Because credit for what? What? Yeah, come up and show the injury. Come up and show the injury. Want to super all that? Right. In the past five years, the Saints have the most wins out of any team in NFL history without Facts. going to the Super Bowl. Facts. That's telling. Y'all want all them games for nothing. Facts. It's not on the heat. It's not on him. Oh, it's not on him. The exact, team, you bro. see why you see that's my point exactly. Him, that's my point exactly, right? Brady, I would, I get Brady is credit, but when y'all saying Brady is this, Brady is that, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's if I put Brady. if I put Brady on those Saints team, they win five in a row, if not four, maybe three at worst. And I put my money on that, and I'll come out the bank rich. That's fact. <laughs> That's fact. And, and C Pen and C Pen don't like Brady. I don't like Brady, but dog, I've seen it. I've watched it. Like the guy's just that good. His impact is amazing. I I can't hate on it. Like it's like, man, this this motherfucker here. He step in, motherfuckers fall in line. It's like he's the general. It's like yo, and and, and the offense just run better. <laughs> I'm just sorry. Like he's that guy, bro. And I just, I don't, don't, see I I just you, don't see Belichick. I just don't see Belichick. Belichick. I just and don't feel he's, he's as good as y'all say he is. I just don't see it. HD. HD. Once again, I am not praising Belichick. It sounds okay. like you praising well, Belichick, well, dog. Well, <laughs> when, I said, when I said something about Belichick, when I said something about Belichick, it was he don't have to explain nothing to nobody if he benched that dude. It's something that went on. And that's and bad that coaching to me. Bro, if I'm going to bench my best player, my team needs to know why. That defense quit on him, bro, in the Super Bowl. They quit. They ain't really quit. Just one person couldn't handle the assignment. Right. Really. That too. But they it just quit point. at the end, dog. I just don't get it. Like, if you're the, if you bench your best player, you have no explanation. And reports are coming out that he did nothing wrong. Coming out, dog, what well, did you bench him for? He, they, it's not he did nothing wrong. They don't know what he, he did. He didn't. Okay, then why did he get another job after that? After he left, he started. Then after that, after he left Tennessee, he got another job. So it's like, if you did something <laughs> wrong, if Belichick yeah, bench yeah, you. So he couldn't do nothing. He had that, they gave him that B contract for nothing. And they know he wasn't nothing, so they traded him. Because it's all about, that's why I say it. it's not, it's it's the way the Patriots run the system. I ain't care Man, about you Belichick. you giving Trust Belichick, you giving Belichick a pass, yo. You giving him too much of a pass. You are. You giving him too much of a pass. Because I'm waiting for the owner to say something. If the owners, I'm the type of person, bro. If the owner, the man that owns, I the don't game, care what the yeah. owner says. I'm talking to you as the coach. You're the general. You're the guy of the job. You're the coach. Robert Kraft isn't that type of owner. He's not a Jerry Jones or an owner who speaks up. So he why? don't care. He sits back and chill. If this was any other owner, they would have fired him or they would have asked for an explanation and he would have had That's to say it. You probably give it to him. No, I feel mean. like I feel like he did that to basically put him on the sideline. <laughs> So he could prove his genius, and his genius got called out. He got destroyed on it. He thought he could put anybody there, and he would beat the Eagles because I felt like he didn't respect the Eagles. I feel like that. And he got no, burnt. No, no. He just got burnt, dog. Know, it's okay. He like made so. a mistake. I, you I feel like you should know that I don't care about Brother Chat because I told you already. I felt like it was a contract dispute between both of them, and then he didn't like how – he didn't like how what's his name was going on with the contract and stuff like that, that he want more money and all that stuff, getting on more. But, but that's not, but, but Eugene, that's not a reason to bench your best player. Everybody goes through contracts. If that was the case, a lot of these guys would be benched during the beginning of the year. 
I would bench you at the beginning of the year. That's why I'm saying, though. You, that's why I'm saying you ain't getting that. I agree with you on on all that other stuff, but when you ask kind of that oh, explanation stuff, I'd be like, he probably gave it to the owner. That's what I'm telling you. He probably gave it to the owner. So if the owner ain't saying nothing about it, then it's cool with the owner. It's cool with him. So if I'm a te- that's why I said from the beginning, HD, I'm a type of fan with the patron. If the patrons cool with it, if that organization cool with it, I'm cool with it. So the owner cool with it, I'm cool with it because I'm a, I'm, I'm a, if I would be a damn show like you say. If a man mess my championship or that I know I can win another championship on my old belt to brag on my on yeah, my I'm wrist. Him, yeah, I he, would definitely fire your ass. Yeah, he would have been fired. I'm sorry. I will fire you. And you would have to give me your explanation because I know damn well he gave him your explanation for that stupid shit he did. So if he accept that explanation. That's why he ain't said nothing about it. Because we know that for a fire when it came to Brady situation. When he wanted to get rid of Brady, and Brady went to the owner, he, and man, that shit came out real quick. That the owner said, uh-uh, nigga, that shit ain't happening. You better get rid of that little ass kid. You ain't getting rid of my son right now. No, you keeping my son. I want him yet. I want him to stay yet. I want him to retire yet. We know he got divorced, but he just don't want to say nothing. You get him the explanation. You tell him what you're doing. If he don't like it, he going to say something. We know he going to say something. So if he didn't say nothing in that situation... I know he agreed with what and what he did. So it's like I'm not gonna argue or do nothing. I know whatever he did. Yeah, he took a championship away from me. And stuff like that. But I accepted the Patreon way a long time ago. So I gotta accept whatever it comes with. Whatever situation they bring away because he been benching, like I said, he been benching player and doing this stuff forever. And I never get mad on it. He doing the Super Bowl now. I'm not gonna get mad on it because I'm that type of person. I'm not gonna get mad if I ain't get mad before. Man, so I... it's like that. I know. That's why I said when Brady did that shit and said it. I, I figured he said it. Yeah, Brady, because I ain't playing the game. If I playing the game, yeah, I would say it. I would say, yeah, damn, nigga, you stole a championship from me. You go out play that dude. You go out do something like I don't want to know and shit like that. Well, I ain't playing the game and stuff like that. So I'm a fan. I'm gonna just go. With whatever they pull in front of me, because I'm a fan. They t- they tell me he won't give me no explanation. I know one thing for sure, he get that owner explanation because every time stuff pop up, that owner he know everybody and stuff. He agrees with it and stuff like that. He go with him and stuff. So I know like okay, they pull, they probably agree with it. That's why I came up with my conclusion like it was probably about a contract dispute with both of them. Because after he make that play, when everybody, I follow the Patriots player, like, all of them, what they'll be doing and stuff like that. Because, you know, we keep our eyes on our players, then if they're causing trouble and stuff, like, we don't want no troublemakers and all that crap. So, we do all that stuff. So, I keep my eye on how he was going on all these shows and stuff, and being acting like a show boy and boy and stuff. I like, the only one person can do that on this team is Grankowski. Because we know he been doing this stuff on this team from the beginning since he got on this team. Right. And you you came on this team as a role player. You make your way in. Now you got the best play. You got to be playing the game. You feel like you all that. And I, it's like he start acting. It's like you could see his way of acting. Like even when he playing and stuff, he act like he all that. And I'm like, dude, you show boy too much. And I knew right away. The way he acting, he would be the type of person that when it comes to money wise, it would be a situation. But that's and, what I'm saying. You guys have all this money. You're not bringing the players in to help the team get better. That's what I'm saying. No, why didn't he? Why see, didn't he do that? You see, when that's why I said with with the patrons, the patrons, the patron is like this, right? If I feel like. I can pay you set the amount of money that I feel you work and your plays work. If you feel like you work a lot, you can go somewhere else and go and go watch the cut it. The patrons feel like they can just get anybody and put them in the system and they will be able to play in the system if they if that person be able to pick up and be able to be coached right, they will be able to play just by picking up the system. But they get to know the past few years, the past two years, that you can just get any anybody and put them to play and stuff like that. It's level to this play and stuff. 
So you got to do stuff. But this past, the past, that's what I tell you. It's the, the past two years, they ain't been having money. They never had, they ain't had money, bro. That's what you say. How you didn't have no money the past two years, y'all didn't pay nobody. <laughs> that don't make sense to me. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to figure it out because you yeah. guys for the past that two years have had, for. I'm just saying, you guys have had the past two years, the y'all had a lot of cap space the past two years. So I'm trying to figure yeah. out, is this nigga going to the strip club with the money? I'm trying to no. figure out. Because all these other players, then they got all the, I mean, they, that contract that came up and he re I mean, he re signed and gave an extension and stuff like that. Like the McCarty brother, the one that on our team, his contract, he re, he re signed again. He had to re sign because I, I think, think y'all got rid of Jason. Y'all got rid of Jason this year. Yeah, yeah, he just, he the corner by. We got right. rid of him because he just came on the team. Yeah, and so I think he just he just went back to Buffalo to retire and stuff because that's who drafted him when he got in the league. So he just went back there to retire. That's why I thought he did. That's why I think he did. because you know if you come out if you came in this league with that team and you want to go out at least you can go out with the same team that brought you. So he chose that and went out there. Man, we'll see. But his brother, man. we. We had to get his brother extra money, and we also had to sign High Tower again. We we restructure High Tower contract. Y'all better resign High Tower back because it showed last year when he wasn't there. Yeah, we got him. We got him. That was had to get terrible. All in new contract. That's why I said he kept all his players. That's how he had to spend the money. He ain't wanted to give the money out to other players to bring them, and you get the well, no, y'all spend some money. Y'all spent some money in free agency this year. Y'all brought oh, yeah, in some we players. Had the money. You see how we spent it? We had the money. Yeah. So the money talking he went and spent it right away. Like, let's go. But y'all couldn't spend we, that for Brady, huh? We didn't have it, though. That's why people <laughs> How do y'all didn't have it? And y'all didn't they pay nobody. Y'all was trading people no. and getting people out of there. You look at the defense and play, and we got more money on defense and stuff like that. Then you look at the lines. We have more money on our linesmen and stuff like that. And you look at, that's what I'm saying. We had Hernandez. Hernandez had $12 million of us, bro. And this nigga, he been playing with us for like ever. We, we got off his stuff. That's how we got all that money. We just got off his stuff. We just got done with his contract. But then we had to trade him to bottom to, to we was paying him the whole time. Okay. So you're saying that. I don't know. Y'all had a lot of money, dog. I just don't see I how y'all didn't have no money. Why money? Like why money? Is... And you gotta look at free and yet too. It's not about how much you got, it's it's about how much the other person giving the other people. So you can get that much money. The other person got higher money than you. He giving that player more money. You know this player they want money these days. They don't care about nothing else. They want money these days. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying you guys have played like you guys have to me had the most cap space, dog, the past like five, six years, maybe ten. <laughs> y'all haven't paid nobody. Y'all probably pay. I give you high tower, but that's about it. And then you pay Gilmore, and you pay Gilmore. That's it. Y'all didn't really pay nobody man, else. You know, how, you know how much it was paying to keep these line man's man. Dude, okay, yeah, you pay. You pay probably what four or five mil. If that, some of them were in the, in the thousands. Like, what are you talking about? You Dude, weren't we paying all, we have, you weren't paying all your lime and big money like that. You still had money oh, left no, over. Oh no, they were they was they had to trade somebody, bro. We was we had to trade somebody. <laughs> I'm telling you, we was we had to trade somebody. We ain't had to let we ain't had to let one go this year because that's how we got that big big money. But if we if we was gonna keep him, we wasn't gonna be having that much money. But we had to let him go, our center, and he he left and shit. It's like I'm telling you, bro. That I follow their team and see how they get the money because I be mad too when they 
when they don't spend the money, but I see how he's spending money. He keep the players in Iran, like his his player that he drafted and stuff like that. He always paid in his defensive player, his linesman, and he paid in and keep the air run and stuff like that. And players that he trusts and stuff like that, he would pay in and keep the air run. So when Brady gave him money and stuff like that, maybe he'd be giving money for like Wes Walker and when we had the others. You know, Man, he dude. ain't pay that much money for no Wes Walker. Stop it. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> You tripping because because that's why Randy Moss that's why Randy Moss left because he wasn't paying no money. So that's what I'm saying. I don't get yeah, <laughs> if you're Randy not Moss paying ain't. money like that. Randy Moss didn't leave for that, man. Yes, he did. It was a contract dispute. Randy Moss didn't leave for that because when Randy Moss left for that, he wasn't be on. He wouldn't be in, in Minnesota talking about. I, he loved the picture. And he he wish he was man. I seen that. I was I watched that. Right. Game. Okay. But somebody can I say they love being that. somewhere. But if you're not paying them what they feel they're worth, they're not gonna be there. I love I love Florida. I love my state all day. But they not paying me the money. A nigga gotta bounce. I'm out. That's why. That's why. <laughs> so what that's you why mean? I from the beginning, New England, New England is not gonna pay you. The type of money you feel so like. So exactly, you but you're making my point, Eugene. Y'all have had money. Bill Belichick feels like he is the architect. Oh, He's the then. reason y'all winning. He looked at Tom Brady as nothing but an accelerate player, an accelerate player that he could just throw to the side. He don't look at Brady like that. He feel like Brady is nothing but that six round pick that he picked. It's the truth. You, you, bro, you talking about way back then. You making my point. Because way back then, way back then, the, the, the money wasn't hold like on, that. Hold like, on, hold on, hold on, Eugene. C Pen, go ahead with what you were saying. Eugene, bottom line is this, man. As an organization, as y'all organization for the most part has been cheap, bro. That's all we're saying, dog. <laughs> That's it. That's all we're saying. We're not saying you wrong in how you look at it or how you feel. I'm not saying you wrong because you're a Patriots fan, so you're going to know more than me about the Patriots. I'm just saying from looking at it and following the team when I can, you guys have had a lot of cap space. And I'm just saying, Bill Belichick, I don't know what it is. I felt like him and Brady, he felt like, look, I'm I'm tired of Brady. It's time to move on. He's thinking long term. And the years y'all defense has been bad, he has not done nothing to make it better. He kept on cutting guys at the wrong time, and he was saving the money. And he was like, since I got Tom Brady, we're good. I can just put this player here, that player here, plug them in for cheap. Which I ain't got a problem with. It's business. You trying to do what you got to do. You're running your business. You basically want to keep money in case you need to use it. I agree with that. You don't want to be close to the salary cap where you're about to be over the cap. So I understand. But I'm just saying, you guys have had a lot of money. You guys could have put more weapons around Brady, and y'all could have went forward and won some more chips. That's all I'm saying. Because when it's done, it's done. You're not going to get a chance to win any more chips. And I just don't see this team winning any more chips no time soon, at all. And you, yeah. you see, I know. I see how you look at it. you look at it from the outside, but like you say, I'm a I'm a fan, so I'll look at it that I'll look at it real way. Because when I see it that way, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I'll, if I was you, I'll look at it exactly how you look at it. I told you that already. I'll look at you exactly that. I want his ass fired. Like, shit, that nigga ain't supposed to be having no damn job after he benched that kid. And if I wasn't no fan, I didn't know how they run the organization. I damn sure want explanation from that dude. Like, hey, man, you got to tell me why you benched that dude. Right. That, that's what I'm I saying. Think. But you shouldn't bench. I just said that he got away with it because he got cachet, which is the truth. If he didn't have those Super Bowls on his resume, you and you even agreed to it, then it's fine of him treating people or the media or the players how it is. Look, I ain't gotta tell you shit. I won four already or five. I'm Belichick. That's, so I that's agree. My, that's what that's the only thing I get with him. He ain't gotta tell nobody nothing. The only person he had to tell stuff was the owner because that's the person he worked for. 
That's the person that is over him, man, over everybody Robert, else. Robert Kraft don't be there, man. Robert Kraft be at massage parlors, dog. Stop <laughs> it. Stop man, you it. <laughs> he, 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 you he, 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 he over there. He over there getting his, <laughs> get his stick licked and everything. Chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Kraft. I, I, know, I know Robert Kraft would like, he like that, but it's one thing he like more, man. He like his championship. No, no. Last year, no. I agree. Last year, he came in there was like, hey man, what's going on, man? We ain't make the playoffs. Other than that, I don't think crap. I think crap was on a blunt with a massage chick, Asian preferably, and was just relaxing. He ain't give a shit. Belichick probably just told him some. Oh well, you know, I, I just did that. Did that, you know? Butler was Butler, and you know he was like. Okay, I'm gonna go to the massage parlor. We're gonna be in the Super Bowl next year, right? Okay, bye. I mean, that's what I said. Right, right. You know how many rings I could be having right now? You know how many? I'm thinking about making a big ass ring. You just took that for me? And I would be choking the crap up by him. But he ain't got no problem with this one. Right, because, like, he's, because no he's won before, right. dog. If he hasn't won before, it would have been a problem. But it was a yeah, problem man, last year. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> we see all this championship. He got it's something going on between that shoe. That's personal stuff. They didn't go ahead and do it. But one thing I know, don't do it again, though. Because man, you gonna run out to tell no, me. No, no, no. Like, he ain't gonna do it again. He better make the playoffs this year. Robert Kraft gonna come out that massage parlor with a thirty-eight. Like, look, we gotta talk. You know what I'm saying? I done gave y'all. He gonna he gonna be like this. Eugene, you, Eugene, Eugene. He gonna be like this. Hey man, look. I told you. Listen. You know the last year was cool, but this year, you know. I done spent all this money on these motherfuckers and you told me such and such or such and such. So are we gonna have a problem? Like, because I need you to run me that money back. <laughs> right. <laughs> but real quick though, real quick, man. Too. My battery about to die off, so I'm gonna cut it short, man. Yeah, I'm about to head out too. Go ahead. Man. What'd you say? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say, C Pen? I said, I'll catch you on the next one, man. Oh, yeah, I'll holler at y'all, man. Eugene, thanks for stopping by, man. We'll catch you on the next one. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, though. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. I appreciate it, man. You brought a lot of insight, man. You didn't come on here trolling like everybody else. (laughs) All right. You be safe. All right. Good luck, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you too. Yeah.